Hello, welcome to the Leaky Gas. This is the Japan Community's Guild Wars 2 podcast for the week of October 5th. I'm your host, Seth Kvestinik, and joining me today is Nubarama. What episode are we on? Uh, 24. Holy crap, episode 24 already. Wow. God damn it. That's like... Durin! <sighs> desk. What? I, I have a new desk. I, my Shin old boy! Old Wait, this shit. is an episode of 24? Oh, oh my god. Like, no, 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 like episode 24, like two as in like twin, four as in, you know. <laughs> what? What are you, I, oh, what? What? I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, I want you to actually try and explain this because I'm really yeah, yeah. confused. <laughs> Keep going here, anyway. I, I want to oh, see how you, how you turn this around. So, um... Uh, <laughs> So two like, is in like, four. That's where it started. Like twenty. No, we're on two, two is in four. Twin. Two is in twin. Two is in twin. There like twenty four is like eight times three, otherwise known as six times four. And I thought that was crazy. Oh god! Doing what you've been doing this week. <laughs> Doing anything interesting? I just don't, I I don't even know anymore. <laughs> I think the real question is what what has Noob not been doing? <laughs> oh, not math. God. Not math. Not, not math. Yes, not not, not, not math. Do you do a math cl- subject, Noob? Yes. Okay. I I I, I don't even know. If, I thought if Canada had a decent educational system. <laughs> East Korean. What kind of question? I'm is North that? Korean. North Korea. So we basically. I thought they'd be even, to, even better. How, one. how many? How many imperialist pigs we kill, or how many mm-hmm. apples Kim Jong Il gives to the poor? You know, stuff like that. <laughs> the answer is zero. <laughs> He's <dead>. wondering. Oh. Um, <laughs> oh God. Uh, <laughs> should we be starting now? Do we? What have you been up to this week? Um, I. <laughs> Wow. Um, unfortunately, not a whole lot of Guild Wars again. Um, Indeed. Just, I, I've still been kind of getting things situated from, from moving and, mm-hmm. you know, getting, replacing my desk, uh, things like that. So, uh, Wait, I, 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 okay. So you started the show with new desk. What's, yeah. what's special about the new desk? Well, see, I, the reason I had to get a new one was because my last desk quite literally didn't make it through my front door in one piece. <laughs> oh. Uh, it actually made so it you... through in three pieces. Okay. Okay. Uh, so with, with a little bit of wood glue, I put it together, and, and it was able to hold on for a little bit, but I just couldn't do it anymore. So um, I, I went down to the uh, the local Nebraska Furniture Mart and picked myself up a new desk. And, and you live I'm, in Nebraska? I'm... I thought you lived in Kentucky. No, I, I, Is that a chain? I don't, actually. I, I think, yeah, it's a chain. Like there's, Nebraska's I live in Kansas City, and there's one furniture here. mart. What? Yeah, that's a weird name. Yeah, that's I know, right? A really like, weird name. Hold on, yeah. Wait, you live in Kansas City. Yes. Are you like within range of Google Fiber? Unfortunately, no, I'm not. Oh, I'm not in this area. No, I, you're telling me. I have fucking time. Uh, sucks. Okay, so, before I move on, what's special about your desk? <laughs> Uh, it is I, a. I, I, I've struggled so, to find this interesting. So my, my so my yeah. old one was a shitty is, one. Is it like Walmart. made out of wood, or board. is it made out of like tungsten? It's made out of metal and glass, and it's an so, L. Oh, it's one of those. Gotcha. And it's an L shaped desk, and, and what I'm liking about that is I now have like a big ass armrest for my mouse hand. Yeah. That is all it's like level. Way. Well, and it's all like level. So like one problem I have with my mouse is when I'm playing and stuff, my I, I tend to. Hold my hand higher than my arm, so my fingers mm-hmm. will start to go to sleep. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's bad for everything. Very, very. Uh, so, yeah, I think this might this might alleviate that problem. Um, right. But, I, other I, than I'm, that, I'm totally up for that. You know, from having a, a shitty desk before, it's just a fucking sweet desk. <laughs> oh, really it's a down. dope desk. It is a dope ass desk. Um, but I'm playing, I've been playing Sleeping Dogs this week. Okay. All right. So you actually okay. did play a video. Game. I did play a video right. game. Uh, I picked it up. Wait, wait, on the wait, cheap. wait. So, w- what kind of game is Sleeping Dogs? Like, is it Sleeping about Dogs? Sleeping is a dogs? fucking badass game. Is what it is. It is like badass GTA dogs. meets a John Woo movie. Before you go on, Durin, New Brahma, yeah. can you finish that joke, please? Can you start that joke again and finish it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think. I don't think we're gonna put him on the spot joke. with everything that he does. It just. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Half fast and awkward. Is, yep. is, is it about right. is it about dogs that are sleeping, or is it about dogs that are sleeping? 
guys. I think I might have to leave. I'll just I'll just see you guys later. I don't well, at know what what's point going on. Your brain, did you think that would be funny? I really like, can't wait, decide <laughs> if this is worse than your guys' talk of Twilight pre-recording. <laughs> Like, where'd you uh, start? Well, we're that- coming back to that <laughs> Twilight talk, so... God damn it. The giant turd start in your brain. <laughs> and at what point did you say, oh, hey, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll squeeze this one out, because of course, of course this was what everyone wants to hear around you. Inflict that upon the people who's spending, what, the next two and a half hours listening to your crappy voice? I apologize Jesus on his behalf. Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, I'm good. I'm I think good. that joke might have killed him. Tell me about sleeping dogs. <laughs> it's just about so it is in fact dogs. not a game that is about dogs that are sleeping. Um, uh huh. It is like, like I said earlier. It's like a like GTA. That's what one thought would, it would be about. <laughs> you, with that would, name. Yeah, you would think. I mean, sleep. I mean, Watch Dogs is clearly going to be about you know a pair of Doberman. Uh huh. Doberman. Oh, you just that, reminded me. That, that, that's the, the game. Was I, awesome. I don't know. I, that's the first like dog <laughs> I could think of. You know what? It's better than dogs are that are sleeping. Okay. Numerama, you have no right to speak up on that one. <laughs> you shut your face. Actually, um, Doberman is a pretty funny plural, though. Not gonna lie. <laughs> but you know, it's a pretty what, what? fucking sweet game. It's 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 great. I, I I don't know. I don't know if I don't know if Amazon still has it for sale or if they will still have it on sale um, at the time of this recording or at the time this goes live. Um, but I picked up off of Amazon. They had the digital download version for twenty nine ninety nine, and if you put oh in a damn, code, when did that come out? O c t o f u n one, octo fun one. That's me cool. Five percent. So I got it for twenty two like fifty. Just so people when know, that applies to pretty out? much all PC digital downloads that are not pre orders or games that came out in the last thirty days. Okay, so, okay, that's um, so Guild Wars two actually applies. I heard. I heard only North America from what I was seeing online. Yeah, I can't confirm that, that because I'm too. in North America. Okay, um, but yeah, like twenty two fifty for that game, totally fucking worth it. During and when did it so come much out? fun. I came out two months ago. Is that, right? is that oh, and it's Steamworks already Steam? that cheap. Jesus it it is Steamworks, yeah. So you, like, you don't even have okay. to download it through Amazon. You can just straight up, you know, grab the key off of Amazon and, and start downloading it through Steam. That's really good. So Sleeping Dogs has been talked about a bunch on multiple sources. Mm-hmm. But if, if you were to chime in in some way, it's just a short statement, what would you say about Sleeping Dogs? I, I You know, I would probably uh, just kind of repeat a lot of the stuff that's been said on, on Giant mm-hmm. Bomb on their podcast and the coverage they've done of that game. And that is that it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fucking miracle that that game even released, let alone yep. that it is a fucking good game. And it is that's, goddamn that's gorgeous cool. on the PC. Yeah, that, that I've seen. Yeah, I've heard that What too. I'm really interested in is like the setting, because like a lot of open world games don't have the setting of Sleeping Dogs, which is a country or a place mm-hmm. that's not in North America. How I is am still adjusting. Cool. I am still adjusting to driving on the wrong side of the road. Um, oh, really? You drive on the? Oh no! Yeah, yeah. To- total straight up European style driving. Yeah, definitely. That's uh, pretty cool. Or I guess non American. I guess I should say. Uh, yeah. but yeah, like it's the setting I feel like is really well done. Um, the, the world feels a little small, but I have a feeling that there that like other islands will open as I play because there's no way they're going to have the entire game be on this one island. Um, but did, did they do, because, because I've always been interested in the Yakuza games mm-hmm. for, no, for no real reason. Like I, 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 same here. I never played one, but I've been super interested in them. Yeah. Like, like, I don't think I'd ever be in a mood where I sit down and say, like, yeah, I'm going to put down 20 to 50 to so, 60 so here's the thing. Yakuza game. So here's the thing. If you were right. the kind of person who has been interested in the Yakuza games, but not so interested to actually drop the money on them, go yeah. buy Sleeping Dogs, because that is the goddamn game for you. <laughs> yeah, like, but, but it's, it's also like there's the question I had revolving that, and I do want to move on because it's an older game, but um, does it have the weird, like, fucking crazy-ass side quest that Yakuza does? Um, I've only played about four hours of it, so I've only done right. some of the side quests, um, and I would mm-hmm. say probably no. Mm-hmm. I, I, I know it has... Or self-serious? It, it, kinda. I mean, it, it does yeah. have, like, you know, kind of GTA 4-style dating, and you can go to, like, karaoke bars and sing karaoke <laughs> in this, like, fucking hokey uh, karaoke revolution-style minigame or uh. something. Um, yeah. and you can go, I think like, I want to say you can go bowling or something too. Uh, you can go get a massage and get a buff from that. Like, so this oh, is like kind of weird things or whatever. 
<laughs> uh, I, I don't know because it was like it was like fourteen hundred Hong Kong dollars, and all I had was like nine thousand at the time, and I just couldn't buy fourteen hundred Hong Kong dollars. You, better I think, I think that means, ending. I think, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but no, what, what I think is really unique about it, and and what makes it a lot of fun compared to a lot of other open world games like it, is the heavy emphasis on the melee combat. So it uses a combat system very similar to uh, uh, Batman: Arkham Asylum, uh, where it's very much you know uh, kind of combo uh, centric and very heavily focused on counterattacking. Um, All right. And it all just feels really good. Like the, the combos aren't super hard to to remember and you know to, to pull off or anything. Um, and the the counterattacking works really well. It, it's it's balanced in a way where if you are quick on on you know the uh, the enemy will flash right before they're going to attack. They'll like have like a red outline. Uh, and you right. hit, hit a button, you'll counterattack them. But if you preemptively hit the counterattack, you'll kind of sort of like stumble for uh, about a half a second after attempting to counterattack something that didn't happen. And so that kind of leaves you vulnerable to be attacked. So you can't just be mashing the Y button, oh, waiting for good. them to finally hit you. Yeah. It's, so it's so cool in general, balance. it's it's got an engaging combat system. I know the graphics are awesome. The, I, I think it nails. What's it? Hong Kong. Yeah. It's Hong Kong, right? Yeah. I think it nails Wait, at least what I would Yakuza. think what Hong Kong would look about? like. It would be like. Trouble. Yeah, that's kind of what I felt like. I've, I've obviously never been there, but it, it totally looks like what I would expect Hong Kong to look like as an American. Yeah, as and an so it just American. sounds like a really well produced. Mm-hmm. Um, third person, the like, crime fiction. Yeah, which is game. crazy because this was supposed to be a true crime game, and we know how those yeah. all turned out. Wait, how <laughs> is the story and the voice acting? I'm really interested. Voice in acting that. is amazing. Like it's actually Emily very, Blunt's very well it. done. Um, yeah, yeah, there's 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 actually quite a few big names in that. Um, I, I, I can't recall what his name is, person. but like you, the your so so you play as an undercover undercover cop. Um, your boss, I I. I don't recall Leonardo the actor's DiCaprio. name, but I immediately recognized his voice. No one knows. Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> 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 no, it was like an actual like Hollywood movie, Hollywood movie star. Like I, no I recognized knows. the voice from other movies. But, but in general, we could say that. Yeah, I, I do want to move on because it is an older game. But yeah, you use. Uh, sorry, not you use it. Sleeping Dogs does look cool. You can yeah. check out the quick look on yeah, the Five website. looks really cool, guys. Um, and I would, I would definitely and highly recommend it. During yeah. ads. Yeah, his, his voice to the choir saying, "Hey, you should play. You should probably play that game if you're interested in a PC game at the moment." And you can car check other cars. It's awesome. But the crazy thing is, though, like there's just so many games coming out right now yeah. that I don't think I'd ever get around to. Oh, so I, I got I do have one other thing before we move on to Shen Boy stuff because uh, I, I I do have a confession to make. Um, I did this afternoon go out and and buy. Oh God, um, here we go. The collector's you edition d- of Mr. Pandaria. Oh, oh okay. fuck you. Okay, thank God. I was, what did you think I was deeply <laughs> terrified that you were going to say Resident Evil, Evil 6. <laughs> oh, yes, Durin bought the collection, a collector's edition of Resident Evil. Because I, I bought we the had PS3, a discussion on Mom, uh, like on Anthology Edition for $80, yeah. <laughs> it was like on uh, Steam a while ago when they were doing like the, the – just after the Bombcast came out and after the Quick Look. And he was discussing how he didn't think as badly of it as Bradley – good Bradley did. No, but because I, Brad's just bad at games. I, I, no, I, I, no, I, 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 I don't want to his, have any of that talk on here because I don't know I, if no, I entirely agree with Duran's opinion. After, after, after his, his, show. his uh, poor showing of the quick look of that game, and, and I want to preface this by saying that game is not a good game, um, but <sighs> it, it is not as horrible as he said it was, and he played right. terribly during that quick look while trying to say that he wasn't playing terribly and he's put all these hours into it and blah, 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 whatever. Um, but... I think I'm off t- off team Brad now because I, I felt like again, not, I, I don't know I don't know enough about no. this game to say People one way from or another. Bomb playing the games bad in the quick look is par for the course. Yes, that's, it, no, it that's is. Plain. But when he, when he blames it on the game being terrible and like says that the that game the Guild Wars Two quick look looked terrible. I didn't. I've not seen the Guild Wars Two quick look, but that game looked terrible. When when he bl- and, blames the enemies on being um, uh, bullet sponges and proceeds to unload on them and miss them with half of the shots, like that's kind of a problem for me uh in either case you didn't buy resident evil 6. i didn't buy resident evil 6 yet thank so, you so how's mr pandaria <laughs> yeah was asshole? that a yet from your face what the, uh, yes that was a yet i actually absolutely plan on playing that game you mean you're gonna you, oh my god oh god all right sure, i mean it'll sure. it'll so, drop to like 20 dollars in like three months because of I the, don't think, the reception I, of I, it. so will dishonored yeah but like dishonored, dishonored, I, I, be good 
Dishonored yeah. I will buy because I know I, I know I will enjoy it. Resident Evil Six right. I will buy because I need to experience it. It's a Resident it. Evil game. Okay. Uh, so how is Mr. Pandario? I don't know because I've been out so goddamn much today. I literally right. came home um, about ten minutes before we were supposed to start recording and put my p- computer back together again. I think public opinion has been pretty positive about Mr. Pandaria so far. Seems Unless like I'm it. Not um, they actually their their sub numbers are back above ten million again. They sold like two point seven million so far. Um, Yay! Copies. So yeah. they're they're you know on the rise again. It's mm-hmm. it's not going to be what it was. I mean, they they honestly though, I, Cataclysm I think the still is went up. Them. Like regardless Either of way. whether the expansion was good or terrible, yeah. I mean, I had this discussion before when Zoomy Man was on. Yeah, we, we, we specifically said like we we pretty much called all of the stuff that's happened so far. It's just that I'm I'm pretty happy to hear that the actual players of the game are happy with the content, which is which is better than I, I've I heard a lot of like it's a lot of stuff. solid content, but it's more wow. Which I mean, yeah. it's not like I mean, Wizards' fault. There's what really did people so much expect? They do yeah, hmm. exactly. I mean. At this point, you know, we all, it's its its almost public knowledge at this point that it is the B team working on WoW, so there's not going to be a lot of innovation there. It is going to be kind of a lot of, you know, more of the same, um, maybe, you know, with a twist here and there, but nothing crazy is going to happen in WoW from here going mm-hmm. forward. So we can expect uh, Mr. Pandaria updates from you going forward? Yep. yep. That's pretty cool. Mr. I, Pandaria I'll be cast. To see. Let's go. How, how <laughs> you'll adapt to going back to that. Not that you spent too much time in Guild Wars 2, but... It'll be interesting to see how you, how you go between the two. Um, After yeah, living in the yeah. wild for so long, how does a man <laughs> yeah. adjust back into civilization? Well, see, it's how he adjusts man. is by playing a monk where everything is pretty much instant cast. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Anyway, <laughs> um, Nubarama. Hi. What have you been playing this week? Oh, what have I been playing? Okay. Mm-hmm. What have you been doing this week? What have oh, you been doing? I, sure. I, I haven't been playing games that much. I have been reading, okay. like like okay, last week and the week before uh-huh. that. Um, I read uh-huh. books. What would you read? Um, books. Okay. Sure. Um, Shin Boy 630. <laughs> okay, no, 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 no. Um, I made an impulse buy on yes. Kindle. I, I I made an impulse buy on an ebook that's $45. Oh, yeah, and I don't know Wait, why. Wait, repeat that again? How a much was that? A $45 impulse buy for an ebook. And that was just that one of the books. What was this? Um, it was, it was um, Park Chung-hee, an era of sa- a transformation in South Korea. Oh, God damn it. I actually I, that, that would count as impulse buy because. But the thing but, is, it's not. It's not as much as I regret buying the book. I regret buying an expensive book as an ebook. Is the biggest wait, regret I realize. Wait, I'd rather five dollars is expensive. No, forty five dollars. Oh, 40, oh god. Okay, okay. Wait, on, wait, on, hold on. Sorry. You said forty five. Yes, yeah. it's forty five. Oh, I heard five. He's well. breaking up on Skype. No, it's yeah, forty five dollars. Okay, that's yeah. <laughs> and just like, is it like? Do any of you own an ebook? Yes, yes, I have a Kindle right. well. <laughs> ebooks. It's, it's, <laughs> um, <laughs> e-book reader, I'm sorry. Fuck you. Fuck you. Actually, okay. I'm not supposed to say that word, right? I apologize to all people related to retards out there. Oh, wait. I shouldn't say it like that either. Jeez. <laughs> just digging yourself in a deeper hole. <laughs> to, okay, so, so back I'm sorry. To Next, back to new. <laughs> back, back, to, back to books and e-books. Um, so it's like I I like buying really cheap books that I don't plan on evaluating that much on e-books. E-book reader. Fuck fuck on my kindle and um mm-hmm. but i realized the second i buy expensive books i just i wish i owned a physical copy of a book like a paper back or a hardcover is if that you're gonna so drop 45 bucks so on really a book, you might as well get a real thing yeah but the thing yeah, was like well, the actual yeah. book price was 65 yeah, oh, okay. yeah that's close that's worth the difference i don't know that's close enough though at that point like if you're already spending 45 another 20 and you get the right. physical one like eh. yeah I might, I might get the no because if you hold on you could have a physical copy of a game or a digital copy for twenty dollars cheaper, but it's different. Because I went out and bought the collector's edition of Mr. Pandaria partly because I wanted a physical collector's copy edition of it. is separate. Right, but the thing is, like well, when you're playing the game, it's it's irrelevant whether or not there's a box sitting beside you. But when yeah. you're reading a book, you're literally holding an actual book. You can feel mm-hmm. the pages. You can smell the sweet. Yeah. See, I don't buy any of that well, and, like nonsense. Well, at all. and Shinboy, whenever uh, I went to go buy it, I, I actually specifically went out to buy a physical version of the game because I wanted the box. I, oh, getting okay. the collector's was a kind of an impulse decision. Oh, okay. Um, I don't, but but yeah. wait, new. At what point would you? Okay, because my, my distinction would be, um, I don't buy books unless they're textbooks over ten dollars. Like ten dollars is my limit for books in general. Unless they're textbooks. Who buys textbooks? Um, I, I I bought textbooks. I have a bunch of reference books I use. I I did use towards the later half of uni, so that, that's been useful. But um, 
Beyond that, I just go to the library. Like, well, why didn't library. you just library I, it? See, you that that that's what like everyone told no, me. No, even like, on the Kindle, why the there's fuck the Kindle you buy a forty-five library. dollar ebook? Why don't yeah, you just go to the library. library? But I like owning stuff. Like <laughs> copies of stuff. Like I, I will admit, about half the games on my Steam's list, I don't ever plan on playing them. I just like the idea of oh, you too, a lot of video games. Mm. Yeah, no, that's, yeah, it's that's like, every. Oh game god, this list. game's on sale. I really hate it. I don't want to play it, but I want to say I well, own this game. Okay, so I, cheap, mine's not that bad for me. It's more of like this game. This game is so cheap. I, there's no way in hell I'll play it now. But I know at some point I may want to play this game. So I'll, I'll go ahead and buy it now because it's only five dollars. <sighs> I don't know, man. Yeah, let's look at my Steam library. Let's see what we got that I'm never ever gonna play. <laughs> let's do um, it. I, I, I bought Uncharted three for that reason. I still haven't gotten around to it, even though I expected. I was expecting that. Yeah, my, oh yeah, my, I bought Uncharted three the week it came out, and it's it's been yeah. shrink wrap for probably a good uh, um, four or five months. Still there I got around for me. to it. I, okay, was for it worth example, it? like I have really yes. stupid games like Portal. 2 I got it for like twenty bucks. Civilization five. Sorry, was that name? I have really stupid games like Portal Two and Civilization Five. I love Portal. What are 2. you saying to me? Noob, get out. Both are those games are awesome. I say those games are good. Those games are both. Oh, no, wait, 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 Quantum Conundrum. Okay, no, 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 sorry, 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 sorry. What am I saying? Oh okay. no, you did not just go there. <laughs> Crisis Warhead. No, that game. Crisis from oh, okay. Field of War. Um, so, so you're picking the games we'd be more ready to agree with, as opposed to the game you meant to say. Well, no, 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 noob, noob, noob. You can't throw Dragon Rising out there because you bought that expecting it to be good. No, <laughs> that's true. I have 40 hours in this game. I have 40 hours. God. Oh, they really slaughtered that. Anyways, uh, yeah, I also played the ship. Anyone play the ship? Have you guys played the ship? I, I, I have, have not played the ship. It is, yet I, I have one I've played play a lot ship. of it before, but like this, right before we started recording this, I got on with like five people, and it was a really hell of a good time. So um, that was that's like the the spy really party. Kind no, of thing, no, no, no. Right? It's it's not. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Kind, kind of so, yeah. yeah. It, it's 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 kind of what I think the inspiration for Assassin's Creed's multiplayer came from, right? Right. Right. Yeah. 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 It is very much like the Brotherhood multiplayer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I know that's awesome. That's pretty cool. That and anyway. I went like camping to Iceland, which is pretty cool. Hmm. So wait, we talked yeah. about like you liking buying things and we just completely just glossed over a trip to iceland yep <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, i, I assumed iceland. he was lying like he always does wait no but even so, if it's a lie at least he's going to be entertaining when he tries to explain it and flush out the details yeah okay, you know what? I go to iceland. fuck you i don't go to iceland if you're going to be like that <laughs> go to iceland. assholes jesus because he didn't because you didn't actually go to iceland right i went to japan again i went to japan I again know. <laughs> Shinboy 630. Did you see Takfuji? I did see Takfuji. Me and Takfuji and Emperor Hirohita's ghosts, we circle jerked <laughs> over an anime figure. What do you know about right. Shinboy? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> I haven't played any games like, at all. Really? Oh, it's all you for you? I played. I, no, I had a lot of schoolwork to do this week. Oh. Yeah. So you That's did read enough. books? Yeah. No. I read PowerPoints. <laughs> Not quite the same thing at all. No, but uh, I played some Borderlands, but that's hey. Borderlands. Guess, yeah, it's, it's freaking borderlands. Yep. I was funny uh, on Thursday night. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna sit down. And I'm gonna play me some fucking Dark Siders. But then I was really ooh. tired and I didn't. Yeah, like <laughs> for for the Borderlands point, I've pretty much decided I will not be buying Borderlands two because Aww. it's gotten to the point where I've confirmed that there aren't any ridiculously broken guns in that game, which kind of oh, takes the wow. entire fun of that game out of it for me. So you're like, yeah, like they, they change how, how, how the gun system works. Jesus Christ. You all talked over one another. What happened there? What? During? No, we I, was saying, I was saying that they, they, they changed like how the gun system worked now. Yes. Um, and as of right now, you can't manufacture guns. People are still trying to crack that. And, well, I mean, it's, it's not that. It's, it's, it's more like the... It doesn't seem... There doesn't seem to be modifiers in this game that are just as fucking blatantly unbalanced as they were in the first oh, game. Oh, okay. Which is yeah, half the yeah. fun. Yeah. Like, yeah, even fun. if you could make the best gun in inverted commas, it wouldn't. St- it still wouldn't be as ridiculous so as the stuff you can make. Does it kind of have the same problem that like uh, Diablo 3's end game had, where like the way you played the Diablo games in the past, and you know um, the way you played Borderlands in the past, is play up to max level and then just make yourself fucking ridiculously powerful and have fun destroying everything. Whereas mm-hmm. in this one, you get yourself to max level, everything scales to your level, everything is still stays incredibly difficult, 
and you never get that power trip, right? Not really. I've heard. Oh, no, I'm, I'm not at that point yet. Yeah, I neither of us are there. I haven't even bought the game. But well, my, my friend, heard. my friend described it to me in this very similar way, where like everything is his level. He's still getting destroyed by right. enemies if he's not super careful. And I, I think to some extent, like like that's okay when you're leveling. But I feel like there should be a point in a game, especially in one as kind of over the top as Borderlands, where like you just fucking destroy everything because that's fun too. So, some yeah, like straight up. Um, it's it's interesting if you, if you compare that to Guild Wars Two, but it, for Borderlands One, when I got my, I think it was like quad shot or whatever it was Hellfire. It was it was quadruple the double Hellfire, anarchy? Double anarchy. Um, SMG. I, I was I was playing a soldier, but it still worked pretty well for me. I, and just being able to like walk into a room, hold down the button, go from left of the screen to right of the screen, and then <laughs> then just keep then just walk to yeah, the see, next like, room. I, I modded myself in SMG as a siren stacking attack speed. Yeah, that um, fired so fast that the firing sound couldn't keep up with the actual rate of fire. <laughs> like, st- like, stuff and, like- oh, and also regen ammo so fast. Yeah, that by the time I would finish reloading it, I would be back at max ammo. So good. Oh, or just like just getting down <laughs> reload speed to the point where it just takes like point one seconds. So it doesn't even matter anymore, and you're regening ammo anyway. So um, and, and see, that's why I kind of yeah. made the comparison to like Diablo as opposed to Guild Wars, is because like in Guild yeah. Wars, there, it, Guild Wars Two, you know, is similar to Borderlands in that like you know at max level things scale like. Things mm-hmm. are always scaling to you, so it always stays difficult. Yeah, but but there wasn't this expectation going into Guild Wars yeah. 2 that it was going to be any. That's different. the difference. That's Whereas the difference. in Borderlands One, there was, and and you know in in Diablo Two, there was as well. Like they're coming from mm-hmm. those games into you know the current iterations. Like there there was that expectation that it would continue with that, and instead using the scaling, like it, it's just it's not as fun. Like yeah. I, I guess for some people they do enjoy that, but. That's not what you come to Borderlands for, is bad. I just hope that, that, like, the first game, this one is saved by its DLC. Yeah. Mm. Because the DLC, a lot of the DLC, pretty much all of it, except for Moxie for the first game, was fantastic. I, I, well, yeah. I, the first one, I would argue, never needed so, saving, though. Even if there wasn't a single oh, yeah, DLC I mean, pack, it was, it was great. vastly improved. It needed saving from yeah. GameSpy, but that, I mean, that's a whole other yeah, issue. Yeah, that's a whole other thing. Because I'm one of those people that already has the Borderlands 2 season pass. So, oh, man, wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow, well, well, they have that already? Hope, right? Okay, I know. Well, yeah, that. well, the thing is, I got it for, for like, 22 bucks or something on uh, Green Man Gaming, so... For the game and the season pass total, I still paid less than sixty bucks. Jesus! That's pretty, that's so all you console people can go suck at paying sixty dollars for games. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so with that, I just 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 wait, to what'd end you do? out the wait, what'd you, what'd you do? yeah, exactly. Just to end out what we we're doing, just the the cynic book book week slash book check nerd. in book nerd uh, book club book club. This all week right. I was cynic, I finished reading. Book club. Um, what have you read, cynic? I, I finished reading a series called Mageborn. It sounds Mageborn. really shit, and I was expecting it, it to be It sounds really shit because it sounds like it's fantasy and fiction, and it's boring. well, it's it's fantasy and fiction, but I was expecting it to be generic shitty fantasy and fiction. Actually, well, were you really expecting good. it to be like fantasy and nonfiction? <laughs> yeah, what? Have you guys never read nonfiction fantasy? <laughs> um, so Mageborn, I f- I've forgotten who the author was, but it's it's really good, and it's 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 on Amazon for like two bucks a book, which is fantastic. Mm. Um, you buy really? I don't understand how you get really these cheap books. I haven't bought a book that's under thirty dollars in the last couple of years. That's because you're crazy. And so and the other one I read, the one I'm reading now, right now, is Leviathan Wakes. Um, it's by James S. A. Corey. It is absolutely spectacular. Wait, think, I thought think... I thought it was by Thomas Hobbes. Wait, is this a different book you guys were talking about? <laughs> that, yeah, we were talking about different books at, at the time. But this is we Leviathan were talking Wakes. about the Leviathan. Uh, it's about <laughs> think think um, Dead Space. Mm-hmm. But mixed with hard boiled fiction, like detective kind of stuff. Hard boiled um, cop. But it's it's not like mixed as in it's just dead space with a detective. It's like literally fifty fifty. There's two characters, two main <laughs> points of view. Wait, I feel like that that ruins the horror aspect of any sort of story is having a hard boiled cop. Uh, <laughs> well, it's it's not really. He's hard boiled in that he is a. Um, He's an egg. An unwilling protagonist. <laughs> uh, he he he's like down and out, and he he's like being pretty much fucked in the ass by the government all his life. Um, but he's not like <laughs> a, a, a one man army. So he's, uh, he's, Max he's definitely not. He they they get fucked over a lot, and so he's anyway. Max Payne. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, he's not Max Payne. He's not Max Payne. Um, it's it's incredibly good. It, if if you like the fiction, if you like if you, I'd say, mm-hmm. Dead Space is awesome, but it's awesome in the constraints of a video game in terms of its fiction. 
This right. is that taken to an actually good Was there a Dead place. Space animated movie thing? There I was. think there was, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Downfall? That was, prob- that was probably bad. Oh, yeah, probably Downfall! Bad. I had to guess. That's the name of the book I was also reading. It's a good book. Which, oh, which one? Downfall. Operation Downfall, the invasion right. of the Japanese home islands. If you like, Yay. like what if kind of scenarios, that's a really good book. Where cool. America dies from invading Japan. <laughs> Fantastic. I actually okay. own a book that's called like the What Ifs of American History or something like that. Some of it's fairly interesting. Anyway, yeah. that's cool. Anyway, um, America's so moving on. Disgusting. Uh, a short off-topic bit th- this week. Thankfully, I-, I think last people were hit forty minutes in time for like. I think like it stopped making sense about a minute and a half in. So. Oh I God! No, no, that was just me picking up the pieces. You tried to make that twenty-four joke. God, it wasn't it. a twenty-four joke. I was just like trying to iterate that you know, there's a mm-hmm. lot of, a lot of stuff. Mm. Yep, there's a lot right. of stuff. Fuck you. <laughs> Like, if you actually, like, take a step back oh. and look at, like, the universe, there is a ton of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All right. So, in Guild Wars 2 news this week. Oh, shit. Um, oh, we oh, is this what the podcast is about? Yeah. I'm pretty... I'm, oh, I don't know. I don't know anything I thought anymore. this was a book podcast. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I could... To- I would totally want to do a book guys, podcast. Yeah. Guys, yeah. let's just, like... Pick a random book, I'll pick characters, and just do an audio book. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, yes! Let's do the Guild yes, Wars 2 books. Yes, dramatic reading. Oh, God. Them, we can make fun of all oh, the characters yeah. by doing oh, audio. Oh, do God. Let's do that. That's but a then good idea. Then you guys could be Logan. Who, who, who would pick Logan? I have the book. Noob's Logan. I, I, I can literally pull out the book from my show. Where's that third book? I've been waiting for that third book forever. No, me too. Why have you been waiting for the third book? Why? Just so, there's, just so there's some sort of... Oh, you know what? It's it's going to be like those Mass, of, Mass Effect books where it's like in uh-huh. between the games and then they release like some sort of weird bridging arc that doesn't make sense with any of the story. I didn't read, read I bought all those Mass Effect books and never read them. Oh. I just pirated them. I don't them. buy books based on video games because... Yeah, I learned my lesson from Guild Wars. Yeah. Uh, that was the first and only time I gave it a chance. What about those really? Halo books back in the day? <laughs> never read one. Oh, I read never the Diablo one. books, which I quite like. Hmm. Anyway, yeah. Guild Wars 2 news this week. Yeah, we should do that. We should really do that. Stay tuned. Stay <laughs> at tuned. least get start. At least get started on some Guild Wars talk before we go wildly off topic again. No, 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 no. I'm just um, saying, like, stay tuned. We're accepting. Do- we should make a Kickstarter. Pay us so we for... can read off of a book. Which book would it be? <laughs> uh, I say the. I say we do it, it, the entire thing, like one and then two. Oh, you mean the Guild Wars two books? Yeah, that's a terrible idea. That requires me buying Kaith. the Guild Wars two books. He gets to be Case. No, Not Duran's just Case. I an ebook, whatever. <laughs> um, I own those books. Uh, yeah, anyway, I own those so books too. yeah, I own those totally. books too. <laughs> Um, in this week's news, uh, and, uh, actually kind of surprising to me, not in what it contained, but the fact that there was another one so so quickly. Another big patch was released for Guild Wars 2 this week. Oh, um, you mean the one that added the new dungeon? No. Oh. No. God damn it. Yeah, where you go through um, the story of one of the books? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Great. That That's exactly what we need from this video game. More Destiny's Edge is exactly what we need. <laughs> um, no, the other book. Oh, <laughs> Ghost of Ascalon with, with yeah. Dougal Keen and that other person. Hey, Dougal Keen does stand next to all the dungeon vendors, so they could easily just yeah, add a does. desk in front of him and make him another one. <laughs> oh, wow. Flame Burst no longer fires if the target is behind me. Thanks, Arena Net. Um, no, the, the really cool one for you is Lightning Rip now hits three targets instead of the originally intended one. Oh, shit. That's pretty cool. Dagger, dagger. Um, going back to it. Yeah, there's a bunch of Your changes dagger, dagger to underwater sucks. Sucks. melee, that? specifically uh, the spear. I think uh, so. Spears are better. They hit three targets as well now, which is which makes more sense because the animation's so Wait, large. Spears was... hit three targets. Yeah, underwater. Oh, now. okay. So I am now buying that voltaic spear. Oh, that's okay. pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, but aside from that, stuff like uh, dungeon tweaks. So they made Crucible of Eternity less broken. I can confirm. Yep. How's how'd that turn out? That dungeon's actually really fun. That sounds awesome. Like, it's it's challenging and lengthy. But um, I just really there's something about it that I like. Is it as good as AC? Mm. Yes, I would say. Awesome, that's cool. That's good to hear. Well, I, um, you have to fight one boss three times in every path, and he's a bitch. But um, like the uh, the, it's not so much like stand here and defend this guy in front of mm-hmm. the door. Like some of the paths, at least one of them has like a really interesting event that you have to do. I mean, that's it's really it's, yeah. it's really tough. But it's kind of cool. 
Yeah, as, as long as there's like something other than kill this boss. That's kind of what I want from a dungeon. Right. Just, like, like, do you want me to say what it is? Letters. No. Like, because oh. I I, I want to I really want to do that dungeon. I can't it wait. Pretty to much, do that it pretty much involves one person of your party standing in one place for a certain amount of time and not going to mm-hmm. get it all while they're standing there, or it resets mm-hmm. it. That's kind of interesting. It's going to be difficult, but it'll be interesting. Anyway, uh, but yeah, so eight, so Crucible Eternity has been changed. Uh, so is that the only one that you can feel has been significantly like what 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 would you say needs work at the moment, Shimboy? CM, CM, yeah, CM. That's about it. CM. Is that, Wait, is, so, is that still a broke as fuck? Yeah. Uh, like, to the point where Reverend and I have our own guild that we switch to representing while we're doing dungeons that is called the Dungeoneer's Blood Pact. And the tag <laughs> is F-U-C-M. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's kind of sad because I need to do 17 runs of CM to get the armor I want. <laughs> you need to do 17 runs of CM without me. Yeah, well, I, I'm I, hoping they change it at some point, and then I'll probably just uh, do it as much as possible. Because, like, um, I have that achievement for doing all the paths, and I'm never stepping foot in that place again. I was actually tempted to just destroy my tokens out of pure anger. I, I can't wait to that. Because the armor from the, the heavy armor of that looks badass. It, it's, no, it does not. I, I hate the shoulders. I hate the hell. But if you just look at the chest down, um, it, look, like looks it. Really cool. it looks really cool. Damn right you like look it. at the chest down. It's, it's like the equivalent of wearing baggy pants. <laughs> It's and his and his and his sweatshirt as as a warrior. It's 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 similar to that if it was metal. Anyway, um, metal sweatpants. Metal. But I, so I, I've heard a raw that a raw still needs work, doesn't it? I uh, I haven't tried a raw since I went in yeah. one path and the first boss just straight up didn't work. Exactly. So well, I, they, so a bunch of the fixes here are stuff like um, repairing skill points that weren't working. Um, like just, just shit that wasn't working, shit that was broke, which is kind of cool because yeah, I haven't run into a broken skill point since. Yeah, so. and it just it just feels like they're putting the final touches on the stuff. I'm so happy this came out this week. I, I, it, it just shows how much work they're putting in on a weekly basis. Because when like last week we discussed um how we are surprised they haven't gone really deep into profession changes yet, and of course. Arena has said they're taking a wait and see approach, but like the main thing I was equating was um this the first patch we got last week to the the bi weekly or monthly patches we got in Guild Wars One. Um it felt like that size of patch. Like I, I was I was expecting last week's patch to be indicative of what we have in like one once a month kind of terms. But the fact that they put out a patch just as big this week, which fixed just as much shit, um and actually did a bunch of like profession tweaks as well in terms of just like Aside from that lightning whip change, then just things like um, traits not working, now working, and like slight rebalances here and there to make some things slightly more powerful or a little bit less broken. Um, nothing for the thief, nothing for the mesmer, really, yet. But aside from that... I'm just waiting for well, the pistol whip nerd. Yeah. I yeah felt like, I'm I waiting felt like, for shit to be rebalanced. Yeah, I felt like last week like I kind of dug pretty heavily on them for not going far enough in balance changes and stuff. Mm-hmm. But looking at the direction it seems like they're they're taking, especially with this you know this patch now too, kind of following that same idea, it seems like what they're doing is, I imagine they recognize that some of these classes clearly need work, mm-hmm. um, but they also need work from a mechanical standpoint, and and that that's shown by these patch notes. Um, so it seems like what they're doing is they're they're working first on making sure that skills work the way they're intended first before yeah. they start going to, going through and trying to balance them. Yeah, so, that's what that's what it appears to be. So seeing that they're doing that and they're continuing that idea here, like I'm 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 a lot more okay and not nearly as annoyed that they're not you know fixing the b- big issues in my class that and they gave lightning whip an awesome ability now and I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> so Duran so Duran's happy now he's got buff. Is Pretty that what much. you're saying? Pretty God much. God damn it. God damn it. I, I think the best part of those, the entire list of class patch notes, the my fav, absolute favorite part of it is that there are like a heap of patch notes for every class, nothing for warrior. Because warrior is there really awesome no warrior thing? exactly the way it is. Wow. What's that? Yeah, yeah, that they skipped yeah, everything except for warrior. Uh, the only change to warrior was the, the change to the spear, which they did for all the classes. Yeah. But aside from that, nothing. And I love Warriors are great. Because warriors are great. There's spears in this game? Well, I'm broken. Uh yeah, underwater only. Oh right. I right, really right, wish right. they weren't underwater only. I know they look so badass. So like many of them take look so spears cool. in this oh, game. And I know underwater is actually the worst thing. My least favorite thing in this game right now. I love underwater combat in Guild Wars. There's too. there's so two good. missions that are back to back that are underwater, and that's preventing me from leveling up. I, I, I don't. I should do those with you at some point. Maybe. No, I'm too. I'm too. I don't love it. I don't hate it. 
It's it's yeah. It's I, I like compare, it. Compare it to other MMO combat that occurs underwater. I love it. Or with any because sort of don't. three like their dimension involved. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Because it's actually like it works. It's not amazing. It's not you know the normal ground combat. There, there. It, it could be better, but it's far and away better than everything else out there in the MMO, MMO market. So speaking of the the spear and the cool skin for that, I don't, I I. I'm actually not transitioning to our next topic, but in, oh, in like a mid-step. Be perfect. I know. So I'm not doing it. In a mid-step between here and there. You're a dick um, that destroys segues. You monster. Shin Boy, mm-hmm. did, you ever get a, did you actually ever figure out how to craft an IDS? Yes, I do know how. Ooh, okay. T- tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. <gasps> not because I'm actually interested, but I, I want to hear t- how Actually, I'm going to tell it. you because no one who's listening to this, unless you have a bunch of money, is going to be able to do it. Awesome. So what's, what's, it up? what's up? How do you do it? It's in the Mystic Forge, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one of those Eldritch Scrolls, or however you pronounce that. That's the 50 skill point one. Yep. Um, 30 or 50 Mystic Coins. I don't know which one. One of those two. If you try okay, to so, so far, quite you. affordable. Um, 100 or Calcum Sword Blades, which I think comes out to <laughs> 600 or total. <laughs> yep. Okay. Wait, and so that, that would be, wait, uh, 1,200 gold. No. And wait, what are you oh, crafting? That's, no, that's silver. like peanuts. An IDS, Icy gold. Dragon Sword. You know the yeah, SDS? Silver, 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 silver. During the Fire Dragon Sword that people get from the Hall of Monuments? Mm-hmm. It's an icy version of that. Yeah. Holy shit. It's it was a weapon gold. from the first game. Can I just say before we continue that I'm fucking disappointed in Anet for not making the dragon black? <laughs> as it it's, should be. It's silvery, right? Or is it blue? No, it's, it's the same color. As uh, the, as, it should be black, like in the yeah, first game. The first game. God damn it. Um, anyway, so it's, so it's 100 of those blades. 12 gold or so be, for the blades. Yeah, and 50 corrupted lodestones, which hover around a gold each. Whew. So 70 gold or so for the whole thing. Yep. Or 60, 65 to 70 gold. Yep. That's so, so as somebody who lot. hasn't hit max level yet, like, what are, what are, what's the average amount of gold that people have sitting in their coin purses at level 80 right now? I have, like, I consider Three, myself around four. average. I have, like, 12. That's okay. yeah. I'd say that's slightly higher than average. That, that, that's about what I. Yeah, expected. I've been okay. saving up. I've yeah. been buying random nonsense like I normally do. Like, hey, I'm gonna drop a gold and a half Bunch on this die. mini pet pack. Oh god, that's <laughs> a terrible idea. But stuff like you die. No, stuff you know what told me? Die. You know what? I learned my lesson, and it is a terrible idea because you know how you get two common and like one uncommon or higher. Mm-hmm. I got two of the same common. Ah. Oh. oh, that sucks. Yep. Wait, so you actually I mean, bought it? Why did you do that? Why because I love care? mini pets. Really? Why? Because they're, just... they're mini and they're pets. <laughs> so... I had like Dumb. 40 mini pets in the first game. I spent, when it first came out, 100k plus, I don't remember how many Ectos on a mini Mad King because I wanted it. Uh, By the way, um, Halloween event, he better come back. Oh, I... they also changed that. Uh, okay, can, can you still buy the salvage kits for Karma from Lions Watch anymore? Because it sounds no, like they take that out. No, yeah, they changed yeah. it um, to you need to buy them with gold, which is the same price as the regular merchant. Because there's a, there was a PSA I wanted to do, but I suspected they would change that very thing. Because um, what you used to be able to do is buy salvage kits for Karma from Merchants and Lions Arch. I think it was like the Weaponsmith. That's an exploit, um, Cynic. You're going to get a ban if you no, I never did it, that. but a bunch oh. of us did. I did it. It was pretty cool. Um, right, you're getting banned. So you should buy him. <laughs> no, 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 man. Karma. If I report all of these rule breakers, maybe Arena Net will make. It actually wasn't a game. rule breaker because it still cost you karma. Yeah, it still cost you karma. Um, and yeah, a but lot that's, of karma. that's like the thing where it's like sixty-two. But it was karma instead. Or... Anyway, so they, they you bought. What do you remember? Okay, because the main thing I wanted to PSA was that really cool salvage kit that you get. Oh yeah, um, it's it's the um the blue, the green, and the yellow salvage kit. Yep. How many of each well, do you need? Just one? One one of each. And yep. um, three Mystic Stones, which you either buy off the gem store or you can every so often get one from your daily. Right. But it sucks because um, when you buy them off the gem store, you get five and you need three. So mm-hmm. in order to make a second one, you need to buy another set of five. Yep. <laughs> which is which is obviously what they're going for. But essentially what I mean, you get can, is... Those can be used for other things as well. Um, but you get a... From those three, so you get the... What was the blue, the yellow, and the green... Yeah, um, salvage kits, and then three of those. You mm-hmm. get a two hundred and fifty use. I think it was um, master salvage kit. Yeah, which is the Shh. the yellow rank, the one that calls. Oh, let's talk of salvage kits, salvage. man. I'm I'm <laughs> set on salvage kits for life. 
<laughs> yeah, he 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 rolled well on his mystic chest and has a bunch of black lion salvage kits. I think I'm currently Damn. sitting on about seventy three uh, black lion salvage kits. What uses? uses. Seventy three uses. uses. Oh, not, okay. Yeah, so you been like, well, I am you sitting on five <laughs> mystic chests oh, and God. a mystic conduit. So, oh, mystic conduits are pretty cool. Anyway, they're, they're selling for like ten gold now. So I, I was, I'm I'm not. What, what is a mystic conduit? conduit? Portable oh, you mystic missed forge. That. It's like a magic conduit from Fate's Day Night. Uh, it, no. it was okay. a short period in the time when that you was were better than your dog thing. Where um, they were getting no rid of the these reference. uh useless crafting materials for some reason, even though like, apparently it had no effect on the economy. Now that they've taken it back out, but um, so they what just wanted to get a lot of those materials off the uh, off yeah the trading post, but oh, okay. it seemed to have done nothing. Anyway, so you could you could have crafted these things in the Mystic Forge, which when put together also in the Mystic Forge gives you an item which allows you to Mystic Forge from anywhere. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Wait, no, Portable it's a magic forge. circuit. What am I saying? Wow. Never mind. It's pretty cool. It's actually, I, it's actually I, I have really one. useful. Yeah, I have one. Well, most of the, the guys are AD have one. Um, a bunch of us who were who were intelligent and had enough gold lying around bought a couple and are now selling them for profits on the... Now that this yeah, I have the up. I have the chest because there's only a limited number. I was saying we should do this, and if you people are thinking of doing this at home, I will kill you all and steal all of your mystic chests. <laughs> I say as a guild, we just buy all of the remaining mystic chests and hoard them, like Eve Online Ooh. style. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. That that could work. It could Get work. A, uh, is that gonna like the like what what would be the benefit of that? Because like mystic chests are so common. Uh, mystic. No, 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 no. They can't be you're thinking of Black Lion chests. Oh, you're thinking of Black Lion chests. Oh, I'm the Mystic chests are the ones bad. that you yeah. made. Yeah. Sorry. The Mystic chest was a special think... item that you could craft with those useless materials to in, make in, the Mystic in my, in my brain, those two things have not separated. Yeah, because they're beaters. They're, yeah. they're beater boys. Yeah. Um, but why, why would you do that, Shinboy, as opposed to just buying up all available resources off the Mystic Conduit? Well, I mean, if you... You, you can just buy them both, I mean... Yeah, it's true. Just buy well, all mystic because, shit and then meet them like, out. Like the mystic chests are the only things that can um, no longer be created. So you want to be the diamond trust, is what yeah. you're saying? Yep. <laughs> yep. That quick, that quick look was terrible. By the way, I did, I did not find that game even remotely. Even though it seems anyway, Patrick tried. Um, he tried. He tried. He tried to find it, make that interesting. I could see um, why that guy still has a whole bunch of those things sitting in his living room. Yep. Those graphics. Uh, that kind of deal, deal broke it for me. In, what, what are we talking about? All right. So um, the point is, so how, so that was how you make an icy dragon sword, which is the like the fire dragon sword from the first game, but blue. So like By that, the way, there's a whole bunch of those right. recipes out there for all the different lodestones. Like um, there's the whisper blade, and also mm-hmm. there's an equivalent um, two-handed sword and a shield, which I've seen, which require a stack of ectos each. Right. That's... It, uh, so it would pretty Oof. much replace like the one-handed sword blades with like whatever a hundred of whatever thing you want to make, whether it be like mm-hmm. shield backings or like great sword blades or whatever, and then replace the lodestones with two hundred and fifty ectos. Yeah, and then you get like a whisper blade. They look awesome though, especially if you're a mesmer. Are, are these on uh, the databases yet? Give us the database in sense of us. Uh, I think so. Right. Well, they'll, you, they'll you eventually can just, get there. Just search it. I, I know a lot of them are, are uh, finding their way onto the wiki. But just to, to quickly uh, resummarize, it was uh, what, what was it? What actual recipe again? It was the fifty skill point scroll. Like I think it's thirty mystic coins, a hundred um, auric alchem sword blades, and fifty corrupted lodestones for the IDS. Yeah, and 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 remember out there that you don't have to buy all of that to make sure that we're not telling a lie. You can just buy one of each. And then put them each in the Mystic Forge, and it'll tell you how much you need total. I might be lying about the number of Mystic Coins, because it's either 30 or 50. I'm not sure yeah, which. but you can check. So just put one in one Mystic Coin, one Elder Skull, and so on and so forth. And you can uh, it'll tell you what the formula is. So yeah, there's a whole bunch of weapons there. like that, though. Like, I, I made the, um, one of the, the fo- is it, how do you pronounce the plural of focus? Foci? Okay. Foci? Okay. That's what, I wasn't okay. sure. Um, I think it's I made I made one of the yeah. foci. It looks it's called like something chains. It pretty weird. much looks like two like flowing chains. Oh, that's coming cool. Out of your hand. Yeah, I made that and sold it for a profit. That's pretty awesome. Um, oh, that the there's the crazy one which looks like the ghostly greatsword kind of thing, which kind of looks all right. But um, Wait, speaking of which, Wait, what? Oh shit! What about? Second segue. Missed legendary weapons. Oh, I've seen them. God. Have in now game. been crafted in game. In game, I saw someone craft one in game. 
in yet. So, so, is there like a you... magical like confetti and everything when someone crafts I it? I wish. And like a beam of be light great. shines down. And Tell me a tale, Shin Boy. I was randomly meandering Sit through Lion's Arch. <laughs> I like how this is starting. God. No, was I'm, it cold I'm, I'm, and rainy? I want to do on Monday nights. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then you uh, head off to the nunnery. No, what? No, 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 nunnery? No, 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 no whorehouse? Reeling this, fuck! Reeling this back into a normal story. I'm not going to keep talking like that. I can't keep it up. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. um, At hey least guys, you know when to stop. My roommate just messaged me. Amazon has Battlefield 3 for $7.50. Anyway. I'm still disinterested. Go on. <laughs> anyway. Um, but he follows up with a butt fuck origin so much. Anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I was wandering through Stop LA. saying anyway. These, these. Anyway. Anyway. Um, I'm anyway. just saying it to piss you off. I saw these rainbows shooting across the sky. <laughs> and I wondered to myself, <laughs> where the hell did that come from? This is actually part of the story. This is true. <laughs> Reading rainbow. True. Yeah, this is actually true. Yeah, and then I turn around, and there's some, like, thief with the COF armor, like, the chest and gloves. So, like, he's got fire coming off of him. And, like, the um the god, like, karma hat. So it looks like, you know, like an old western mysterious <laughs> person hat. That's kind of um, cool. Oh, man. And he had all of that dyed the hottest of hot pinks. <laughs> <laughs> yep. While wielding the legendary short bow. The, I forgot what it's actually called. Yeah, I forgot what it's called as well. But the unicorn. It's, it's got some really great name. The unicorn bow. Yeah. And I can confirm it's hard to tell from like the three models that came out of everything. Like everything. Because they're not very detailed. Mm-hmm. It actually does have a horn on the front of it. That's cool. So it is a unicorn. And when you shoot oh, it, not only does it shoot rainbows at like the head of the rainbow. Like the arrow itself. It's just a unicorn head. Oh. <laughs> I was actually, you know, I was actually hoping for sparkles. But, I mean, like, it's kind of hard to see, but if you screenshot it, you can definitely tell it's a unicorn. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it so, like, like, we were all standing around him. Oh, what were you saying, Doran? I, I was just going to say, it should, like, explode in confetti when it hits the target. Oh, it's, like, <laughs> well, the most I mean, colorful confetti. It was in L.A., confetti. so it wasn't really hitting a target. It was just sort of disappearing once it got he out couldn't of see, He couldn't see the target hit animation. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Maybe there is one. That's Who knows? Anyway. Yep. Um, so, we were all talking, like, standing around, just chatting with him. He was saying how... It took him from the moment he decided to get it to him actually getting it, roughly five hundred hours and oh five hundred gold. Five hundred oh hours? Wait, wait, wait! Like entire playtime or just to get it? Like from the time he decided to like, like okay, I'm gonna get this weapon to the time he actually ended up with it, it was five hundred hours. Fuck! So Fuck I'll see that. you guys in three years when I get a legendary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If Jesus. I play about an then, hour a week, how how many hours is that, or how many weeks is that? Is that is five hundred? All of them. I was gonna say, oh, <laughs> both really? cases. Five hundred. You absolutely twenty four. It's like jackass. two times, like <laughs> two as in twin and four as in like, like for th- fuck. Yeah, we're all talking to him. And then, <laughs> oh god! And then, like, no, no, no! Just to answer new. Uh, it would be ten years. Yeah. Five, uh, just, just to make sure you can cross check this with me. Right. How many? You divide it by three hundred sixty-five days and multiply it by. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Keep going. No, that's not no. <laughs> no pi. How, how many? How, wait, 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 how many uh, years would it take if you played for two hours doing this a uh, week? Twenty-five years. Twenty-four years. No. No. Wait. What? I'm confused. I fucking hate you. I fucking hate you so much. <laughs> it would be it would be 20, 20... <laughs> So it would be, be 10 years for 500 gold playing 1 hour a week for 10 for 52 weeks a year. Right. For obvious reasons, a little bit less than 10 years. How much would it take you What to about what about week? leap years? Wouldn't there be like 53 weeks? Shinboy. <laughs> Shit! I wanted you to yell at me. My tail. Fuck you! Uh huh. No there was reaction. a guy standing next to him, uh, a warrior, of course, because warriors are awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, he said, "Yeah, I'm about to get Twilight," and I was thinking to myself, like, "Okay, this person will probably, you know, needs maybe like 20 more gold and like right. the, one of the gifts or something, and then they'll mm-hmm. have it." So, like, I'm just watching this guy shoot the short bow, and then all of a sudden, I see him walk up to the forge. Stand there for like two minutes and turn around and suddenly have Twilight on his back. Oh, oh shit. And I'm going to be honest, that's probably the best looking weapon I've seen in any yeah. game ever. 
Uh, well, I oh, wouldn't man. say that, but it is. Mm. What's better? Hmm. After seeing it, like him actually swinging it, I was just like, okay, that's when I switched gears from I want an IDS oh. to I want Twilight. So, all right, like so Twilight those three weapons. Oh man! For for those who are unclear, um, are a shitloads hard to get. So five hundred hours that that's an accurate representation of what right. would take to take one of to get one of these. <laughs> Ten years. Uh, at playing one hour a week for the whole year. <laughs> yep. Um, or so, fifteen years if you play three hours a week. Play. The thing is, with the, those are not only are they cool weapon skills in themselves, skins in themselves, which which are some in some cases arguable. Like some of them don't look that great, in my opinion. But um, the shield is okay. Oh, d- f- fuck you! The shield is amazing. The shield is absolutely- the name is fantastic. I I love the animation that goes with that shield. Just just, just because the pages turn. Oh yeah. Anyway, that was really creepy. <laughs> I'm just calling um, you out on that. Yeah, no, uh, so that, that's kind of an example. Like the all these weapons have awesome animations and frequently like in world effects associated with their use. Um, so like the, the the big one that everyone wants to kind of go after is uh, the one that combines the two great swords. Is Twilight Eternity, I believe it's called. Right, Twi- so it's Twilight and Sunrise. I think is the two. Yes, which yep. uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would say. That looking at Twilight and looking at all the video and shit of Sunrise, you would be losing out if you got. I don't know eternity. because I was like eh, on Sunrise until I saw one video where like the Asura throws it over his shoulder. You know how they mm-hmm. carry it, like, mm-hmm. um, the trail, yeah, of it. Like then I didn't realize that the trail was actually an extension. Because I'll explain. Yeah, here. the way both those swords work is Twilight is the night sky, Sunrise is a morning sky, mm-hmm. but it's not just an image; it acts like a window. Yeah. So if the person with the weapon or the weapon moves or your camera moves relative to the weapon, the image changes. Mm-hmm. And same thing with when they swing it, it leaves a trail of the image. That's the and cool part. That is amazing. You know, the cool part The cool part is, uh, I don't know if it does it with Sunrise as well, but Twilight, when you run with it equipped, it leaves like little droplets on the ground where you run and those two act as windows. Yeah. Whereas Sunrise, when you're running with it, it leaves like a trail behind the sword, like as if the sword. Oh, had so does like Twilight a trail when you have it, it equipped. When you have it like out. Oh, okay. Oh, awesome. So they they leave trails like a, like Tron kind of thing, but for the whole sword's length that uh, runs behind you like a ribbon, and that's also like big window to the sky um, as oh, as man. you as you move. But the coolest images I've seen of Twilight specifically is when you do something like hundred blades with it. Mm. Yeah, it pretty much creates a big circular window. Yeah. To, to, it just looks like do, you're generating night sky by your, the awesomeness of your three. Mm-hmm. It, it, oh, so um, I, I think you'd be losing out if you get a turn because I, 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 sunrise looks cool-ish. Have we seen what a turn looks opinion? like though? Uh, it, well, it's, it's it's sunrise during the day and twilight at night. That's all. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. It was announced to be that way. Assuming it's not anything more, it might be. They might have even more crazy effects associated with it. Which could be, which would make sense because it's harder to get. It's literally twice as hard to get because you have to get both. Um, the, well, the way it works is each legendary requires four items. It's um, it's like one prereq weapon, mm-hmm. uh, a gift of luck, I think it's called, or right. or fortune. I think it's fortune, and then two other gifts. I'm pretty sure that Twilight and Sunrise just replace those two other gifts in Eternity. But what's the base weapon? I don't know. I could be wrong. It's on the wiki. That's okay. another Twilight. But, <laughs> <laughs> no because like well for sunrise you need the gift of sunrise and for twilight you need the gift of twilight so it makes right. sense they replace those right maybe maybe it's the prereq weapon and the... maybe it's the same prereq weapon as the other two but the two swords put there in place no because mm-hmm. there's dusk and dawn which are the two prereqs they're different oh each weapon. right yeah right. and we were talking about hoarding before some guild actually did hoard all of those prereqs and are selling them for a crazy amount oh, Fuck wow those guys. but yeah uh, in in general, because you can craft the prereqs, it's not it's not crazy. Uh, no, you need to be lucky. Oh, really? Fuck. The way that. you craft them is you take four of whatever weapon type you want that are seventy five, like level seventy five plus, and rares or exotics, and chuck them into the Mystic Forge and hope you get it out. That you fucking oh, kid, man. man. Oh, you want to hear something better? The gift of fortune is called so because you need seventy seven Mystic Clovers, and the recipe, the Mystic Forge recipe that you use to get them. Only has a one third chance of spitting it out. Oh fuck you! No. What happens if it doesn't spit it out? I think you get jack shit. Yeah, oh, that's great. Oh, 
all. That's great. Uh, it's um, yeah. <laughs> and each of those recipes you. requires like six philosopher stones, a mystic coin, an ecto, and something. Hey else. Hey guys, come play our game so we can fuck you in the ass. <laughs> well, he's he's reminding me why I'd made the decision to not go for Twilight when I first heard about. <gasps> See, it, I have made know? the decision to go to like to go for Twilight. Twilight, man. As as a little add on, if anyone, um, I have on the how to obtain endgame gear thread on the giant bomb guild wars 2 forums mm -hmm. i have a nifty little like diagram on all the parts you need for twilight yeah it's like a it's like a uh flow chart. It's like a flow chart yeah yeah um I'd, I'd say to answer your first question what what weapon i think looks cool in twilight in any game ever i would say the only one i liked more is the gun from vanquish because it transforms and looks awesome while it does so and does so so quickly just awesome animations from top to bottom um but aside from that you're probably right like, and, and that would be like a, a case like not everyone would agree with me about the gun but twilight looks fucking spectacular like, like just looking MMO into wise, it it feels like my soul is getting sucked into the video game sword oh man <laughs> oh. but yeah so aside from us fapping you over twilight so a bunch of a bunch of um and you these need weapons roughly been... a million karma to get it now, there's a bunch of these maze, uh, weapons that we made out there, so like we've, that's why I feel comfortable looking at videos of them now, because I'll inevitably see one in the world. But in general, hey, it's possible they aren't bugged. The, the, one, the one thing I was afraid of was that someone would do all this shit, and then it would and bug just, out and not give yeah. it the Yeah. How, but, well, how would you feel if that happened? I would like, quit the game just, and never come back. I'd quit the uh, yeah, game I'd probably back. quit the game. I'd probably I almost quit, quit the, the game. game from one like 12 to 15 gold item bugging out on me that's because you're a girly man that's because i'm a girly yeah. man but if something that costed 500 gold bugged out i'd be done we're like yeah. your entire life or a good chunk of your life was yeah spent 500 hours non-existent lost. weapon <laughs> yeah like pretty much the easiest part like by far the easiest part of twilight is getting 500 ac tokens now that's crazy because ac is not it's a son of a bitch well it's easier now ac is really easy uh, it was well, easier mode. now than to get 500. <laughs> well, Dern, you remember the other day when I messaged you, see if yeah. I wanted to go to AC. I was like, no, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to have that kind of time. I'm not going to be on very long. It only took us an hour and a half. Like, yeah, no, it wasn't even that. It was like maybe half oh, an hour. You weren't on this run, Cynic. Oh, right. Yeah. Mm. Like maybe half an hour, if that. And then like, they were talking about being done. I was like, are you. Oh, like, it was a ghost eater? Yeah, it was ghost eater. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I would expect that to take even less. We were doing it, we were doing it to do it quickly. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> No, that's that's definitely possible. I feel like um, the by I feel like by the time I get around to do these like speed clears, just everyone's like, do. "No, I'm done that. Fuck you." Yeah, that's, that's oh, yeah. how I feel too. Oh, yeah. I guess no, I guess I'll, 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 I'll try to do these speed clears alone. Oh, oh. No, because now <laughs> oh. that they changed in the recent patch that um, you can do speed the tokens clears are account bound. Oh, no, that right. the tokens are account bound. I can do that for other characters. Yeah. All right, let's do it so right I'll, now. I'll, right while we're doing okay. the podcast. As long as not CM, because no one wants to do CM because CM's still fucking shit. Um and I and I want that CM armor so bad. But hey, what were we talking about again? Oh yeah, so legendary weapons are out, and that's pretty much it. Like, are awesome. legendaries account bound? Or uh, soul they're bound? soul bound. I think. No, they're soul Fuck, bound. Fuck, that sucks. Yeah. So you can't just make them and sell them? No, absolutely not. No, oh. no, nope. that would be against the reasoning of the legendaries in the first place. <laughs> yeah, they're soul bound um, on acquire. Oh yeah, and it's. Yeah, they're, they're totally cool. I, I wouldn't say they're the only thing. It, the only thing I want to see um, this I cannot confirm or deny if the um, things you need to because you need um, four hundred crafting in two different professions depending on the weapon. Like for Twilight, it's armor smithing and weapon smithing. Mm -hmm. I want to know if the things you make from that are account bound. Oh, so you can buy those? No, like just so if you have like armor smithing uh, four hundred on one character and weapon smithing four hundred on another. Oh. So you don't have to level it up to 400 That's a very again. good point. Because hmm. then you have to, if that's not the case, then you have to figure out, okay, I want to make this person my, like, weapon smithing or this person my tailor, like, yeah. right from the uh, like outset, depending which legendary you want to eventually get, which is kind of lame. Yeah, that is totally lame. Yeah. I actually kind of was already leaning towards that path. That's just how I play video games. Like, I, I don't want to repeat. I see, like, I went dueling, like, on my, on my warrior. Like, mm -hmm. That's not useful for no. any legendary that I need. I don't think. <laughs> yeah. So, like, anyway, uh, so with I mean, that, I, mean I, I guess at least you can you can still like level up another profession on him, and you're not going to lose your jeweling. So I guess there's that at least. Yeah, but it's like armor smithing. I already have like 100 plus, which isn't admittedly isn't a whole lot, but it's still like time that I spent doing that on another character. Yeah. And if I had to get to 400 on this guy, I'll be kind of upset. Right. Yeah. Totally. Uh, so moving on, uh, I, I guess that's pretty for news this week. I guess we could um, 
th- there's a couple other things that have been going on. For example, uh, Renet's starting to do like a video series or something about the legendary weapons. They put on like one two minute thing. I don't know if it's going to be if it's going to amount to anything. But shrug. Uh, aside from that, you're just looking at world versus world rankings have come out again. I'm happy that I, I played PvP this week. New Brian Wait, played yeah. PvP this well, week. That, that blew my right that blew my fucking that. mind. Uh, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Wait, well, rankings or new Cynic, playing PvP? Cynics needs to L2K. He needs to L2K. Um, oh, well, L2K. okay. It, it, it's gotten to the point where the PvP community is starting to let me down. And that's and that's totally sad because we all we already got to the point where... Um, so, A... Okay, so there's a couple of reasons I don't really... Um, I'm not really as into PvP as I was a couple of days ago. Like, a couple of weeks ago, sorry. One couple is that days ago. we all have shit to do, so me and Suki and Benny can't get on at the same time as often as we used to, if at all. Um, and then, and we were so, like, st- so Cynic stuck with me playing PvP with him? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, that, that, was, that wasn't so element. bad. It's more like that we couldn't get a full team together. Like, I don't mind nope. playing with you, but we just couldn't we get a full kept team. kept on getting randoms. Um, and Durin but- was like, I'm too busy... Playing Mr. Pandaria to join you guys. No, it wasn't even Mr. Pandaria. It was something random. It was like okay, sleeping, was dogs. It was sleeping dogs. dogs. It was yeah. sleeping dogs. Um, so it's gotten to the point where um, me and Benny and Suki, when we had that, when we had that huge run of like multiple weeks of just bashing our heads against PvP, and we eventually got to the point where we we had a specific set of um, of tactics for each map that we know would be successful if you execute them properly. Um, so I, and th- those were like stuff we formed on our own after like winning tournaments and stuff like that. Like actually getting to know how enemies tend to react when you do certain things, like tactical choices. You guys were choices. clearly using the wrong tactic. Um, I mean, seriously. So with with that, like I, I I we had an understanding of how it worked. It got to the point where we, me and Numerama got into a PvP match. I think it was like yesterday morning, right? Or was there something yeah. Like, well, um, like or my time, time morning, you time your time no. night. Um, yeah. And we went to the match, and I and I didn't I didn't even say they had to do it. I just, I just like suggested some of the tactics we we clearly used to be victorious before in our PvP runs. Um, so for example, in Forest Nivelhell, um, our best tactic, and I want to put it out there so more people know about it, uh, is if Don't you give away rush keep, winning rush strategies. Keep, no, rush keep. He wants people to know about it so that it's not like the only tactic anymore, and he actually has to think again. Yeah. Uh, so what, what what most teams do in um, Forest and Nivelle, which is the first map of, I mean, to be specific, we're talking purely about tournament PvP. I don't the play the only form of PvP. Uh, no, I, I don't it's play the worst PvP form anymore. of PvP. People are good. I can't be first place all the time. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually something that came up. Quite a lot. Well, no. But anyway, see, the problem is even in even in the the random PvP, like people aren't good, but they're so bad you still can't be in first all the time. Yeah, no, that's true. W- no, it, it's that nice because they sense. all they all mob no, it, up in no, the middle while I go around catching points. Because they don't actually try to points. do anything, and so yeah. like all they do is just fucking kill and kill and kill and exactly. And you, can't and do you just avoid the group. You avoid no. the group and do your own shit, and you always end up either second or first. Well, if you're a guardian, your own shit can be holding a point. But if you're playing an Ellie or a warrior, yeah, then yeah, the best way to kill would be to roll with another person and get a lot of. Well, I get a lot of kills, I get a lot of assault points, so capturing points, neutralizing. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. where we get a lot of our points, um, as opposed to holding and defending. Um, so, I yeah, if you're not rolling with someone knows what they're doing, then none of your team is helping anyone else take a point or kill things, and therefore no one gets a lot of points. Yeah, and, th- and that's why I've exa- I played exactly one structured PvP match since launch so far on my LA. Yeah. So... <laughs> Uh, but the point was, uh, the point I was making was, so I walked into tournament PvP with Nubarama and just suggested the stuff I know to work because we won tournaments with these tactics. And the tactic specifically in Forest and Nivelhell is instead of, because every team, what they do is they send uh, one person to their local, which is on, depending on your side, Henge or mine, um, two people up to the, uh, what's his face, the monster and rush two people along the quickest path to the center of keep. Or to to capture keep before the other team does. Or alternatively, as a massive shift to that plan, they send one person to um, the local, four people to monster, the and they go for your StarCraft people. Uh, yeah, the natural. Um, four people to the monster, and then they swing around and take keep. That those are the only two variants that people play. Right, you got a L two K cynic, uh, which is what six pool. Like you got to learn me to and keep. New Brahma, well, New <laughs> yeah, Brahma specifically came up with the um with the term LTK as it learned to keep 
Ship learn to get, right. learn to rush key. Marine Marauder Renovac. <laughs> right. Because well, like, exactly. you, you clearly don't have the APM to L2K, and once you learn to L2K, all tournament plays become just, easy. Just, you know what? Learn just three, just, just three gate robo. It's safe. It's safe. <laughs> oh, God. So, three gate robo is the fuck. No, fuck you. No, three um, gate robo is, three gate robo is if you have bad macro. It should be two gate robo. Yeah. Cause that's all, that's all one base can sustain. So, um, but for us, alternatively, uh, some teams, again, as a massive shift in how they play things, they send two people to keep. Um, there are two people on their le- the left side of the map or their side of the map. So those two go to kill the monster. Then one goes back and captures their local or their natural, and the other one goes back to help keep. While a, th- a fifth person goes around to capture, uh, to back cap the enemy's local and to take the enemy's monster or to try and steal the enemy's monster, which is invariably a thief. Um, which is a good strategy. That, that one actually I can respect. Can I just say my some... favorite strategy? Uh, yeah, go ahead. You take all five people and you rush the other team's natural. I, so, <laughs> so crazily enough, what me and Benny and Suki found was that the actual best strategy that we what we we could think of, uh, and that worked pretty much every time, was three to four people. You're right, rushing the enemy's natural. Because there's usually only one person there. There's usually only one person right. there. One to two people taking out your monster and your local. Um, so if, if you have, like, for example, a ranger tank or a mesmer tank, they can take out your monster easy. So they just go to your local or your natural, however you want to call it, um, capture that, then kill your monster. While the other three to four people take out their monster and their local, then you just hold the sides for the rest of the map match. That's it. Just hold the sides and you win. Because people so keep just fucking... Keep. It's nor keep because the main thing yeah, is keep, keep is where like all of the the, the combat is yeah so, and just more, let them have it just a big more blob. importantly keep uh, has the longest travel time to kill the monsters so if you think hmm. about it if you if you actually are able to capitalize on the two sides of the map and mathematically control the two monsters that is seventy points at the start. And another 70 points halfway through the match. So that's 140 points. And possibly a third set of 70 points at, at the end if you're somehow failing. Um, which is literally half what you need to win. Like that's, that's pretty much all you need to do. So if you control both sides, even if you don't hold the points, if you keep them neutralized and make sure you get the monsters, that's 140 to 210 points for your team. So Cynic, just, you know, you, just you know how I know that this is never going to become a popular strategy? Well, how? Um, because that because exact same strategy it. is pretty much the winning strategy for Rafi Basin and WoW, and yet people never do it in all the years that that, that game has existed. It's just like how how do you not see this? I I, I was I was sitting because there because people are bad at games. I was because there people in this people join people join PvP to kill other players. They don't join to do objectives. Um, yeah, it's called uh, player versus player for a reason. I, I was literally Idiot. seeing that before a match. This is my biggest problem with playing random like servers yeah. in Battlefield. And uh, me yep. and Noob were standing there, and I was like, hey, so what I usually do is I send, uh, as uh, we keep both sides, and we control the monsters, and the literal response from the guy we were talking to, Noob yeah. we tested this, was, <laughs> right. that's the worst idea I've ever heard, what do you, 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 don't, you don't have a, um, you don't have a PvP uh, achievement thing, what is it, what, right. the title? You're a noob, noobs, noob, You're noob, what have you been playing this for like five hours, noob, <laughs> right. I just, noob, he just called, noob, noob, noob. He just he literally just called me a noob, said I didn't have a, a title, and then just disregarded everything I said. And, and, I, and yep. I told Cynic, like, like we should have just we should have flipped him off at the end and said, "Hey, guess what? Your tactic didn't work, asshole." And then Cynic's like, "No, that's mean." You sure that's, told that's, him. Um, no, nah, <laughs> we we didn't end, end up doing it because I didn't want to be a, as big of a fucking jerk as he was. No, but, no, no. Um, like the game before, we we got like what it was like four points from a win, and we yep. tried to pull off that strategy, mm-hmm. like the strategy Cynic was talking about, and the yep. guy's like, "Thanks for using that plan to win us the game." Just, so oh. okay, uh, to be to be clear, uh, so we, we did around eight runs in the in the morning. Uh, the first two, I I tried to go, "Hey, how about we try this stra-? like the, the one I know of that w- would win the match, the mathematically best way to win, which is holding the two sides." Um, and having one Roma to neutralize center whenever they cut, try, they try to attack the two sides, which is awesome. It's usually a thief. Um, and so the first two games we tried, we, I, I tried to communicate that. Neither the time it went through. The second first game, game, two people were AFK, including yourself. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I got interrupted. <laughs> um, parents, but yeah, the, the, the like Aaron the third. Ibram. 
the third game we played, I think it was, me and a Mesmer, uh, th- th- so at the start, they shouted me down. They said, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to rush keep as normal and blah, 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 blah. At that point, I was just tired of fucking jackasses on the internet. So I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. And then halfway through the Finally match, we, me and a Mesmer keep. were just like, fuck this. We went to their local and held it for the rest of the match. We lost <laughs> by four points. So we came back from like 100 oh, points behind to four points behind just by holding the, the two sides and not touching keep. Um, so I know the strategy works, so, even huh. if you're in a fucking um, disorganized team. I have a question about the scoring. I don't know if anyone here has had the situation where you say you both have, let's just <laughs> say you both have 499, mm-hmm. but one team has two points and the other team has one. Yep. When scoring recalculates, who wins? Um, um, I remember that same thing happening with um, the Alliance battles and Guild yeah, Wars because, 1. And because it depends on the points you have. No, 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 no. Kerzik always. Got oh right, Kerzik always. Got, yeah, right, right. That was it. Uh, you would, would think it would, same you, here. You would think it would default to whoever had the most points of the next. Team. You would think, mm, but in the yeah. first game, but it, the, it was alliance battles was similar. It was Kerzik versus Luxon, and Kerzik always it's got all about the points. points first. Right. Um, yeah, I can't uh, confirm. What there. happened to me once was we were down like four hundred to like one fifty, and we came all the way back and owned like everything except for like one thing. And it was to 500 again. And it was like pretty much 499 to 498 with us down. So next time it recalculated, it was like 507 to like 503. But we lost because Kurzik got points first. Um, well, I can't guarantee one or the other. And without going to any more specifics about the matches, I wanted to say that in structured PvP, people have already become full fucking jerks. And it's really sad to right. me. As to be it's expected. Terrible. It's, it's just, well, yeah. they weren't that bad well, in RA. Like, in, well, I mean, Cynic, I, I blame this on you for not knowing how to keep... RA, that guy RA was wasn't mad serious. At HA was. Ah, serious. Wait, what is RA and HA? What is this? Uh, random Arena RA is, is basically you, you, you press enter battle and you get put into a random game and then people do slash resign and then you never actually play the game. Uh, these are ga- game tests in the first Guild Wars PvP. For, okay, uh, okay, um, okay. And then, but here and was then a HA, was HA. Oh, here was a send, like, yeah. Yeah, it was a tournament that went on 24-7. Right. Mm-hmm. So basically tournament PvP. Yeah, just tournament um, PvP. Except and on a larger scale. People were jerks there, I assume? I yeah, people... HA. Um, basically, HA, what it came down to near the... Like a couple of years after release, it's like you don't get to play unless your HA rank is over 7. Oh, and, and here, it's, you're already seeing teams come together, which are like... You have to be above rank 20, for example, right. to be in teams. And this is only weeks after release. Weeks! Right. Welcome it's, to video games. It's the worst! Yeah. Um. So I, I was just totally. I, like, I, I can't believe you're it. surprised. People just by take, this. Yeah, people just take their video games incredibly seriously, and it's... but they're not even good at the game. No, they, they're not. But they think they are because they're uh, better than the majority of people, and that's all that matters. And just to be clear out there, I we've done the two side strategy and lost. Like it is, it's it's not invulnerable. But, there but are but definitely these weren't ways like to what, keep fifty point losses. Well. They were like four point losses. No, no, I, I don't mean that. That that one even a was fifty awesome. point loss is kind of close. Um. No, I wasn't talking about that specifically. New. I was talking like when I actually have a organized team together, a oh, full guild, right. us versus another guild team. We've done the two side strategy and lost because they did a really good keep strategy. This isn't the only one, but the main thing is um, people out there need to realize that there isn't there are only one options, way. Right? Yeah, that there are more than one option. Like there's there's multiple ways of doing things, and yeah, it's spe- like if if this strategy didn't win you the game last time, maybe try a different one. Yeah, or 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 even better, like if you're trying an alternative strategy and it doesn't win you a game, try it again, maybe. Or, like, or or you know, if somebody seems f- fairly confident in, in a strategy that they are bringing up to you at the start of the game, maybe don't just shoot them down. Like, think about it for a second and, and just give them a shot. Because if it doesn't work out, then you know the next time you come across somebody who offers up that strategy, you'd be like, well, I don't know, that didn't really work. But then out again, last time I'd, I'd always say never never group with people below rank twenty. That's just how you lose. <laughs> well, there's that too, and, and and make sure everybody knows how to, you know, right? Yeah, everybody has L two K. Everyone, everyone, <laughs> everyone has L two K. Make sure already. you do the L two K check before you, yeah. um, you know, <laughs> LFG rank twenty or twenty plus L two K PLZ. You know, that's it. That's all you need. Just type that into chat. You had me till Z. <laughs> this game is <laughs> this game is turning into fucking wow. All over, like. Ugh. Um, oh, it was turning into a video game. That's what so, it was yeah, so that's well, my I disappointment in structured PvP. Yeah. I, I'll probably only run it with guild teams, uh, or if I have at least a majority, or you can just run it guild. with like random people and just troll the hell out of them. Oh yeah, or, or just be a jerk about it. I, I, yep. Just go all the way. Know, the opposite really direction. Fun. 
Um, and that could be, that could be fun. Like just roll a guardian, just roll an invincible guard, and just fucking walk around and do whatever the fuck you want. Um, well, I will say, cool. as uh, you know, somebody who who does enjoy a structured PvP, and we haven't really had any. Um, we're just now kind of coming together and starting to do guild events and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I definitely once things have settled down here at home, which hopefully should happen in the next week or so. Um, plan to play a lot more of the game, and and I will figure out a time to start doing guild structured nights because that is the only fucking way I'm going to touch structured PvP. Yeah, uh, I gotta yeah. say, speaking of guild events, I'm really pissed that I had a great idea for one, but I can't do it. Why? Why? Because um, I was going to do like a scavenger hunt type thing where everyone goes out and collects. you can't drop items. No, 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 not that. You can mail oh. them. Um, Oh, right. But the thing is, I was going to do it with trophies because you can't buy them on the trading post. Um, right. But you also can't mail them. Right. So, mm. Trophies. So, like, what I was going to do I is think... be, like, have, like, five items that people need to go out and get. And then, like, they mail them to me and I reply with a um, a link, which is a screenshot oh, of me that's, somewhere that's, in the that's... world. That's... That's a bad. No, no, no. What you need to do is have a bunch of like people beforehand to help you out, and basically you give them riddles and go to and like yeah, find them sta- a specific somewhere. area, right? Right. So we have oh, that'd be so o- good. Like a bunch of officers. Yeah, and that'd be really fun. Anyway, uh, that would be awesome. Anyways. Okay, dude, we gotta um, figure this out. Right. Yeah, let's so, I'm in on this too. So aside from our plan, no, it's our idea, Shin Boy. Fuck off. Oh, <laughs> <goodness>. <laughs> uh, my realization that it was too. I want to sabotage game. your thing. <laughs> <laughs> no guys come over here the scavenger hunt is here we can move on to our final our main discussion topic this week uh Hell yeah we, oh god so uh, it, it what's been... gonna be in the guild wars 2 expansion what do you think <laughs> <That's correct. laughs> uh so the idea for this week's Pandas. discussion um ca- kind of coming off what we talked about last week because we actually came up with a bunch of stuff that we were uh, last week for those who don't know was us discussing um what we think could, guild wars 2 could improve upon also what it did well from the start uh, for the one, me- one month it's been out. Uh, this one was brought up quite a bit during that, and I think it, it warranted its own thing. Um, so bringing back Very something we did before topic. release, uh, we want to do another Guild Wars 2 Great Debate uh, with the Lincoln right. Cast crew. And pro time life it's- or pro-choice? No? <laughs> choice, actually. Democrat or Republic? No, no, I, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm always a choice person. Anyway, um... So does Guild Wars 2 have an end game? Is the is the I'm not sure if I should have voiced a political opinion. I think that was a bad idea. Wow. Um, I, I was, you better bleep that out. Like yeah. you better bleep it out. Um, oh no. But Guild, Guild Wars 2 does Guild Wars 2 have an end game? Question mark. That's the discussion topic of this week. And I know that sh- um New Barama cuz we're not just to be sure, we're not all, we're not going to necessarily be choosing the sides that we right. firmly believe in, but definitely ones that we can make arguments for. Um right. Shinboy, you're on the side of yes, Guild Wars 2 has a has a end game. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nubarama is team leader of the side that oh. thinks they no, do not, don't. They do not have an end game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Durin, you and me uh, have decided. Can I just decided say that yet. sounds like the average? No, I've decided. I just haven't voiced it. Uh, yeah. so what, what side are you on? I'll fill the gap. Uh, Guild Wars 2 absolutely has an end game, and people who say it doesn't don't understand what the fuck end game is. Okay. Correct. High, like internet high five. Um, I'm about so, to high five my mic. You fucking stupid Trump! <laughs> I don't even know what you just said. <laughs> Accurate representation of the person uh, who believes Guild so, Wars 2 has no okay, endgame. I'm going to grab a coin in a second. I'm just going to get up and grab a coin. I'm going to flip a coin to. Are we calling so how you're going to decide which side you're Yeah, oh, okay. that's how I'm going to decide who starts because okay. if you go very interesting directions depending is on it, who you Is it an Australian uh, coin or yes, a good old American coin? It's actually, so, it's so actually it one sided. It's so some sort of like triangular I, I coin. There's a in my room. Direction. I have a Panamanian <laughs> coin. What? I was asking, does it flip the opposite direction? I think he went to go get the coin. I think he might have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. I, did. Right. I literally went to Time get the coin. Time for it. And I'm oh, back. God. Um, Everything so fell apart. That an, was some awkward silence. It's right an, it is, it's an right. Australian 20 cent piece. Um, 20, 20 cent coins. The fuck Whoa, kind of 20 you live cent? In? Yeah, what I need, the to, I need you to fuck? mail me that coin after you're done. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's got the queen's head on one side and the number 20. And I should totally go get my Panamanian coin that I have somewhere upstairs. This is a normal 20 cent piece. It's about... 
Australian volunteers making a difference coin, apparently. I'm pretty sure I have some batting. Oh, so you guys have the queen too. too. Do you have the queen on your paper money as so, well? So um the two team heads, uh so that being clear is Shinboy and Nuburama. Uh pick a pick well Shinboy, I will give you the choice. Pick a side. Queen, Tails queen, I pick queen. Tails? Queen. Alright. Queen. Tails right. hey. never fails. Cool. Alright, and and I'd obviously Nuburama being a good Canadian pick. Wait, hold on, how are we gonna know if you're lying? Because we can't see you. Oh you have to trust. Trust. <laughs> All right, I'll flip my own coin. Heads uh, or tails, Shinboy? I'll flip oh God, my laptop. I'm on the ground. <laughs> Professional production right. we have here at the so, Lincoln Cast. It, it was heads. So, New oh, shit. you get to pick uh, what side. Which, which Do we go first or second? Um, I, I want to hear gonna, Are you going to defer and, to the second half? Apart. Yeah, second half. Let's go. All right, so Shinboy goes first. Uh, Shinboy, so you, you can mount an argument. D- does the give pres- us the two. Pres- yeah, the presidential debate was this week. Are we doing it like that? Are no, you be as shitty sure, of a moderator sure. No, as no, he's that's was? that's two v one. What the fuck? That's like Joe Biden, <laughs> Obama versus Romney alone. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm Romney. Fuck you. I'm Obama. Wait, no, I beat uh, Romney in the debate considering he performed. Okay. Fuck you. No, we're going to be okay, into politics. Um, I just wanted to see who made the first argument. But from, from here on out, just just chime in when you feel like it. At least make. Okay, I'm just going to say we just had a discussion about how it takes 500 hours to get one weapon done. Is that, is that the, was that the start um, and end of your argument? Moderator, I'd like to respond to his uh, delirious accusations. <laughs> What, what okay, first of all, what you, grinding. What do you it's mean? Not a fucking <laughs> grinding. Don't don't say. Please put Noob. a billion hours into this game and grind, so you can. That's an end game. No, that's just grinding. I, I would assume end game is something. You know, it's not a grind. It's brand new, a lot of different content, and it's just not like one thing. There are twenty four. So, all right, here's here, here's here's my here's my argument against you, noob. Um, when you're saying like end game is a bunch of different things that you can do. Um, so. The, the the grind for legendaries, that is one aspect of the end game in, in Guild Wars 2. Guild Wars 2's end game a lot of people that are saying there is no end game to this are Don't say PvP. From, Don't say PvP. From, no, Don't no, say no. PvP. Are people who are coming okay. from standard MMOs that expect <laughs> it, end game is a you know ten plus man group going in doing raids weekly. That is end game to a lot of people. Now that may not be to you, noob, but what I'm getting at no. is that what they're what they're overlooking is the end game can mean a lot of different things. Even even in WoW, the end game for Mists of Pandaria isn't just raiding. There are a multitude of things you can be doing at end game. Pokemon ra- raiding, the Pokemon stuff, the um, farming stuff, uh, dailies, heroic runs, um, and then PvP is an aspect of that. So, looking at um, Guild Wars Two, what you have at, as end game content in Guild Wars Two is you do have you do have structured PvP, you do have War versus World, but you do also have Legendary, um, you know, grinding, as you may see it. Um, you also have uh, the explorable mode dungeon um, stuff that you can do. Uh, exploration is considered considered a, a type of end game. You know, trying to hundred hundred percent that. That's map. actually you what I've get, been doing. Like I've you, I've gone yeah. from like sixty percent to seventy five this week and had a great time with it. Yeah, and you do get like you know in game style rewards for that. You do get stuff appropriate to your level, same as you would for any other in game activity in the game. Um, you know. For some people, raising professions is their end game. For some other people, you know, uh, I, I think to a lesser extent, but like you know, run, run, running the auction house could be, or sorry, the trading post could be, you know, their end game. Like end game is really what the player finds fun at the end of the game. Like it's saying that there is no end game in an MMO is basically saying there is nothing fun for me in this game once I've hit max level. Can I just say something like going about the hundred percent? Um, sure. I've just been going, you know, going down the checklist in each in each area, and that has led me to like this sudden realization that like this is a fucking fantastically designed game. How yeah, so? Like, it, yep. like what what I mean by that is is um, it's really not evident if you're just like rushing to to eighty, but like all of the points of interest, all of the hard quests, all of the waypoints and stuff, without you noticing, are a fantastic way to get you to the dynamic events. Like without mm-hmm. really like, without really telling you like, yo, if you go here, there'll be stuff near here. But like, I've just been going, okay, going down the checklist. Okay, I got two points of interest left. So let's run to one of them. And along the way, I've been sidetracked by like forty-five minutes worth of dynamic events. Yeah, like it's very smartly designed in that way, where it's not just like overtly telling you like, hey, go over here for a dynamic event, or you know, if you follow this trail, you'll hit the next dynamic event. Like it, it does so in a very fluid fashion. 
just kind and of also, as you're playing like, through the game. The hard quests have been, I know a lot of people have given a lot of the hard quests like shit for being kind of terrible. There are a lot of really, really fun hard quests in this game. <laughs> yes, there yeah. are. Yeah. I think there's just a lot of them. So there you know, are equally a lot of mediocre to not so great hard quests is really what it comes down to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but also, like, going to what you were talking about with the big game being, like, brilliantly designed, even even beyond, like, the from a game mechanic standpoint, like, with them kind of leading you um, naturally from, you know, one dynamic event to another, but also, like, the world itself was incredibly designed. I, I'm, I'm going a little bit off here from the in-game stuff, but I just wanted to say, like, you know, extending no, on your point No, I don't think you are, further. because this is what I'm doing as my as part of my endgame. Well, yeah, and, and like, you know, fighting jumping puzzles, that is also, you know, I feel like another endgame to this, um, to Guild Wars mm. 2. And is is it as much endgame or content that you could have done beforehand that you're doing now because you didn't have the time to do it before? Both. Like, again, that's why, that's why I said I, endgame is not, like... This, this like in game has to consist of a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of that. Like in game is like activities I guess, the player can enjoy right. at the end of the game. Because the definition of end game, I guess, is clearly different from person to person. I personally see end game as very much like the original Guild Wars is Eye of the North expansion, where it's like purely stuff to do once you're max level. And I think the variety Which is, of in options... my opinion, all the explorable mode dungeons because ah. even like you get scaled down to thirty five for AC, for example. Right. You try and go in with a group of 35, that's going to be rough. Mm-hmm. That's going to be um, four hours of your time. But yep. are those, again, for a lot of those dungeons, are those dungeons you have to specifically do at max level, or are they available from the very beginning and get-go? Or like well, once you've hit like level very 45, beginning. Oh, a lot of them, A lot of them are... are um, they're available from certain level caps. Right. Are they? Okay. Available yeah. on the yeah, way. They're, it's like thirty five, or is it thirty five for Askel? Like you shouldn't do it at thirty five, yeah. but it's like thirty five. Well, and every and, and ten levels after level. Arena, Arena has said like the end game in this game is you know it's not going to be once you've hit max level. This has become a whole different game. Now you do this and you do that and you do this and you do that. The end game is the stuff that you have been enjoying throughout the game. So like if you're saying again, that's why I go back to my argument before. If you're saying there is no end game in Guild Wars Two, what you're saying is there is not. No, I'm in saying the game there's a lack of end game compared to other games. Like there is, is definitely keep end game stuff to do, but there is just not as much of a variety as a lot of people would expect. Like, see, I would, I would actually argue there is way more variety. Like the when you get to the end game of like let's say you know going back to WoW again, when you hit you know the max level, what you're generally looking at as you know your definition of stuff that you can only do at max level. You're talking basically uh, probably generally about five to six heroic dungeons, uh, one to two raids, um, and and then you know your standard PvP stuff, dailies, th- those kinds of things. Um, and actually, and there Guild are Wars some dungeon explorables that you can only do at eighty. Yeah, and in, in Guild Wars two, like you do have eternity and a raw. Yeah, and, and you <laughs> and, and more importantly, in Guild Wars two, you do have the twenty five um, heroic du- or uh, sorry, not heroic um, explorable dungeons available to you. And while yes, you can do them sooner. Again, you have to remember that the um, the drops are scaled to the level that you are. So at level eighty, they are still just as viable to do as they were before. So you and have. Also, I don't tw- understand why you would do explorable stuff before level eighty because all the gear you get from the merchants is level eighty gear. Yeah. So I I, I, I pretty much let you guys define your argument, and, and your main argument is the same thing that uh, Arena proposed and, and, and i wouldn't right. say I, I think we stated last week that Can we I kind of add one thing go ahead to that i've seen a lot of people on forums going like well i'm just gonna say it took me roughly 100 hours to get to level 80 um from launch which i didn't really rush it but mm-hmm. i sort of knew what i was doing so you might take a lot of people longer than that but i see people going like oh i only played this game for 300 hours i'm like oh, fuck you you played a <laughs> game you paid yeah. 60 dollars for exactly 300 hours <laughs> yep I don't understand how you could be disappointed in this. You like again, this, this goes back to for that long. yeah. Again, this goes back to like if this was a subscription based game, maybe you could have an argument for well, I only played this game for three hundred hours and I've already run out of content to do. You know, why should I keep playing this game? Like then I can understand like why should I keep paying fifteen dollars a month if there's no content you know there for me or how it is I feel about it. But with Guild Wars two, like you said, you paid your sixty dollars. That's all you're gonna pay at least until an expansion comes out of some kind. Well, what and if you've you got gotten three hundred hours? Well, that, that's your own decision. That was not required to play through the game and enjoy the content. Uh, but you played your 300 hours, and you've clearly enjoyed your 300 hours. Otherwise, you wouldn't have spent 300 hours unless you're Jeff Gersman. Um, <laughs> but, like, how many other $60 games in this day and age can you say I, I just, you like, put 300 hours into? 
I'm just like, what else do you want? Yeah. Um, <laughs> more endgame content. <laughs> go. Go, Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan, go. Clearly, Who's clearly, Paul Ryan? Gets, is, is clearly 200 hours yeah, of you. endgame content is not enough. If they no, I don't are like me. It took 100 hours 200, to get well, to... Well, 200 hours of doing dungeons over and over again doing, so you can get your legendary? Anything. So... anything. My main thing. I mean, I, with, I don't like um, the idea that it's okay. Go ahead. So my main thing with Endgame Gear was to, and to some extent, I'm playing devil's advocate here. But um, so I let you guys define your argument as being, hey, it's essentially what Irinets has been saying from the start. Um, they built the game being Endgame from the start. They want you to be doing the same stuff when you finish the game as you did at the start of the game. They want to me- like give you all the awesome well, content. Let, as let's you go let's, along. let's be fair here. They want you to be doing the same kind of content. You're not. Yeah. You're not recycling the same stuff that you were doing. <laughs> been killing the same enemy for 500 hours. Uh, so well, that that's, that's why I wanted to make that. I would that. somewhat disagree with you. So yep. the so the idea is obviously that you get to experience dungeons all the way through. There's, there's new ones every 10 levels. And at the end of the game, you have a choice to go back and do explore more dungeons. Um, also, for example, there's the dynamic events, moving through areas, 100%ing the areas, finding <laughs> jumping quip, um, puzzles, which you're able to do all the way through from the start of the game. And then you have the choice at the end game to go back and do that. Also, when you start a new game as a, as a level... Uh, at, from the first moment you purchased it was two, you can make it. You can have a level eighty PvP capable character to play structural PvP, structured PvP for, with, and that's that can tide you over, and you can do that as much along the way as you want to. Same versus world, world versus world, you scale up to eighty, and you're able to do versus world, world versus world from the start. Um, my main thing with Guild Wars Two has been um, first and foremost, uh, I think the problem I ran into it with was. Uh, yes, there, you guys can pose an argument. Hey, I've spent, for, for example, me being cynic, um, spent 200 hours, 250 hours of the game. And why would I be complaining if I wasn't particularly engaged enough to get, to do more? Um, but then that's kind of saying, Hey, you're, you're, you're imposing the free, the free to play inverted commas model. So the $60 game, um, border around an MMO. And that's a very right. difficult thing to do because we're not comparing this to dead space. But we can't. It, 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 my both my point are, also is though, like obviously you enjoyed the game if you played for three hundred hours. I don't yeah. understand why. Like, I don't understand why you're complaining because you want because it's an MMO. We, right, we, again, yes. we're not talking about this versus Dead Space. We're not talking about this versus Modern Warfare. Even though those are both sixty dollars boxes, which you purchase. And on fuck the you, shelf. people play thousands of hours of Modern Warfare. That's true. It's crazy. Um, but then people play thousands of hours of structured PvP in Guild Wars Two. Right. right? It's, it's those are comparable. Um, but but the thing is, we also have to compare this to existing MMOs to some extent. We also have to mm-hmm. say, hey, uh, what does Gear Wars 2 offer for the people who want to put two thousand hours into a game? For the people who want to put four thousand hours into a game, what would they be pre- like? What would they feel like doing in that circumstance? Um, my main problem with Gear Wars 2 in this case was when I bought Gear Wars 2. So after the beaters, I started a game. I went from 1 to 80, and I explored as much as, like, how I approached exploration, I, I've voiced this to many people in the guild um, as I leveled, was that I never 100% in areas, because that became a task, like a chore to me. What I did instead was literally just go where I felt like going, experience what I felt like experiencing through, from level 0, so level 1, all the way to level 80. So yeah, I, did, the same. Yeah, I did as much of each area as I wanted to do, and I moved on. Um, and in a lot of cases, that was just getting all the waypoints in an area because I wanted to be able to do that for later. Um, f- fighting the world boss in each area, which is which is uh, depending on the area itself, either fun or boring. And then in many cases, doing a lot of the hearts, and definitely not all of the hearts. Like some of the hearts are just boring. So I went from level um, one to eighty, and I pretty much hit every single area in the game. I don't believe there's a single area I've missed except for that um, weird centaur area north of the human starting area. Oh, Hithrahi Hrothi Hint. Yeah, that's Hrothi. like the only oh, thing I whatever. haven't touched. Whatever, Hrothi whatever. Lands or something. Yeah. Well, if you're going to be complaining about a game, at least get the names right. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's, that's like the one area I don't give to a shit fair, about. To be fair, I like, I did 100 percent that zone right after Gandaran Fields. So, so what I did from level one to eighty was do the stuff I wanted to do, and that was awesome. I also did every dungeon, so every story mode of every dungeon, as I got to that point. So when I hit level thirty-five, so level thirty, I did Asylum Kettle Games. Uh, I think it was like level thirty-two. I, I did literally every one, except for Honor of the Waves and um, Crucible of Eternity. When I hit the level for those two, I did it when I was like level seventy-nine, as opposed to level seventy-five and level seventy-eight or whatever it was the equivalent of those two. Um, so I did every dungeon story mode. I did 
as much of the PvE as I wanted to do, the entire time, or a lot of that time, I spent in structured PvP, and I talked about my misgivings about World vs. World last week. Um, uh, last week uh, being stuff like the fact that it just purely, purely isn't balanced. Whether that's the way it was to devs want it to be or not, stuff like being able to pile up a bunch of siege golems outside the enemy's um, spawn point shouldn't be something that is even remotely conducive to fun in a video game. Like, that shouldn't be encouraged, and that shouldn't even be allowed to some extent. Um so world vs. world problems aside, I did structured PvP, I did dungeons, and I did um, the PvE content all the way from 1 to 80 for that 200 or 250 or so hours. And now I've gotten to a point where uh, I've seen all I want to see in, in uh, the PvE areas, like because that's what I did from 1 to 80. I, I walked around the places I wanted to see. Um, I did no fucking jumping puzzles because I fucking hate jumping puzzles. Uh, I, I did... <laughs> And I, and, I, and I went through the sewers of Lion's Arch, and those were cool. And I went to like the pretty, like, a lot of the um, points of interest are awesome, and the vistas are awesome because those are points where you actually see something pretty, especially in a raw. actually skipped every single vista I've done. Dude, when, when you go to a raw, do so not a raw, but uh, or all of or right. do those vistas. Those are like some of the most beautiful. Some of them are vistas. also really tough. Yeah, they're really t- difficult yeah, they're... to get to, but they're amazing when you see them. Um, so I usually don't do jumping puzzles, but some of those are at the end of a jumping puzzle. And I did those jumping puzzles just to see those vistas. Um, so I did that from 1 to 80. And I did structure PvP from 1 to 80. And I did the dungeons, and I did a bunch of the explorable pods. Even though I haven't done all of them, that has come down to whether I've, I've been able to find a group and, or not, not, rather than me not wanting to do them. So my end game now is literally either doing the stuff I didn't want to do in the first place in PvE, um, doing structured PvP, which, as I said earlier, has become almost disgusting with the amount of pe- with the people in there. Uh, unless it's they're playing with 2K PvP, level 20 plus PLZ. Um, and but to some extent, it's the same three maps every time, the same order every time in tournament PvP, and that that is definitely boring. Like, I, if me and Nubarama didn't always have to play um, Forest into Hell first time out with all the right. failed teams we were in, it would have been a better, more better, more enjoyable experience. Um, in World vs. World, I still have those problems. So like, it, to me, Endgame Guild Wars 2 rests upon the ability of the stuff I did along the way to continue to be interesting, and right. it's failed to continue to be interesting. Again, it lacks the variety. It exists. Endgame exists. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it doesn't exist whatsoever. It just lacks the variety that is So what you're saying is that you're and I would say... that Guild Wars 2 Endgame exists. You just don't like it. Um, well, you don't like what it has to offer at this beginning. time. It, it, I don't like what it has to offer at this time, but part of that comes from the fact that I did it along the way. So its strength is its weakness. Right. It's not an end game well, because it, it's... Is what, it really an end game if what, all what of that argue, content though, was available from the beginning and you just simply chose not to do it and now you're doing all of it right now? At, yes, because, at because ArenaNet yeah. stated before this game released that that was what the end game was going to be. Yeah. There was no surprise here. It's not like, it's not like somebody bought this yeah. game... Expecting there to be forty man raids showing up at the end of the game, exactly. and suddenly they're not there. So, like mm-hmm. anybody who's complaining about, oh, like I hit max level and now there's no end games, like, well, tough shit. You knew that going in. Yeah, but like there's they, they've acknowledged that there wouldn't be any different shit for people at end level. It's unless right. obviously future expansions or um, content and, packs. And, and, and that's what I was going to say. Like at the same time, the. The variety of stuff to do right now, um, some people do feel do feel like that is is you know maybe a bit lacking, um, and, and you know more content is definitely necessary. However, we're also talking about a month out from from release, yes, a month month and a week out from mm-hmm. release. We're about the point where in most other MMOs, <laughs> you're going to start expecting within the next couple of weeks um, to see a major content update, something that is going to add content to the game. Now, whether that be, you know, PvP maps or hopefully, you know, maybe a new dungeon, um, a new or like zone, hopefully, or something. Um, map unlocked. Map area yeah, unlocked. Yeah, something to, you know, keep players interested in the game world and, and moving around the game world and play, continue playing the game. That said, given the model that Guild Wars 2 is doing, I can see why they may not go down that route. Because, like, that's necessary in, in subscription-based MMOs because you got to keep the people paying but there's an element of what i've argued that you haven't really addressed and and, and this is what i think is probably the, the strongest element of my argument is that um for example in guild wars one i had four or so um main characters um 
uh, not main character, but characters I put brought through the entire game. And for most of them, I did prophecies along with their basic um, campaign. So I did Nightfall and prophecies right. for the Nightfall character, uh, Cantha, whatever it was called, uh, and prophecies. factions and prophecies for my factions character, and so and so forth. Um, the core element of that was that prophecies was eminently replayable. It was amazing, especially like since. It was essentially just a string of dungeons the entire way through. If you look at those, that game as it's actually laid out, um, the core one of the core terms that give us one was how replayable it was. I, I I don't I can't see that replayability in a lot of the stuff from Give Us Two. For example, you're about, like strictly about story content. Um, so story content is absolute trash for a lot of cases. Like some right. of the story shit is the missions. Fuck the missions. Fuck you. Um, some of them are just. Like a lot of them are just bad or boring or contrite or the story, the storytelling is good I think good in enough. the very beginning when it was a lot more open ended, it was great. But now, as everything gets streamlined, it just becomes yeah. A it's big the second half of the time. It's the Mass Effect Three problem. It's, it's right. the the limitation of what your choices are and the lack of convincing story articles to. Uh, make you feel less bad about being forced into the the end game consequences like you i i don't i stopped playing my story missions at level 56 and i don't see myself going back to them unless i, I think some of the stuff. later ones are actually kind of cool yeah like some of the designs are pretty cool but stuff like um like for example the most memorable thing for me from level one story to level 56 story was and, and spoilers here um tune out for the next 30 seconds uh pause 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 the death of your uh psychic character oh right yeah exactly and that that's when everything fucking goes downhill yeah from because, that, that place onwards because um, you lose all of the options the problem there is that story beat supersedes all the gameplay from level one to level 56 like literally looking back at it that story beat was better than all the gameplay prior to that i don't want to play through level one through 56 through that gameplay again it was boring it wasn't as good as that single story. Um, That's a sad thing. I, I disagree. I feel like the due to the fact that it's so much more open-ended, I would have less problems mm. playing that compared to once I hit that beat and I realize, oh shit, I don't want to go back and do this single option that I have no way of changing. There's not really many options. It all becomes streamlined from like the open-ended beginning. And I feel like not just the story, but the game itself in a whole is where – where you start out in such an open kind of gameplay, you start out in different areas, there's so many different things to do, mm -hmm. and as you level up, it very much gets streamlined into one single path. And, and that, that's really that's like a, a, a valid argument. Like I, I don't share right. the same opinion, but I, I can see why you're coming from that direction. So in both these cases, we're, sh we're, we're showing you that, hey, maybe the storyline isn't necessarily playable. Like I, definitely there's some people out there who will roll new characters and will no, get I, th I think if you roll a different see, race... I at least the oh. beginning of it is replayable. The beginning is. But yeah, then the well, beginning. What I, would, like, what I, I have say no is problems actually, replaying the beginning. It's like after I hit level 50, it's the same goddamn thing regardless of what path well, I mean, change. you still get some choices, but yeah, I, I get it. I get and it. beyond that, heart quests don't change. I've done all the heart quests no. I wanted to well, do. Didn't, didn't they say they wanted to the remove heart quests or something? Oh, fuck or was that just dynamic events? I don't know. No, I think it was just um, they're going to add and remove dynamic events, not heart yeah. quests. And well, as okay, you well, know, my, my... Heart Quest is how you're, you're, you're channeled through the world of Guild Wars 2, at least for those first couple of areas. And I've done pretty much all of them with my, with my main and obviously the stuff I did in the beaters. Well, see, my, my, my argument against that would be that um, you're, you're taking the personal story as this is why you would play a new character. Like, this is, this part is why, of why I would reroll a whole new kind character. It kind of has to be, well, right? the, it, It's the part of what you The way you progress play, is by getting but... XP from personal stories. As somebody who has, you know, come from other MMOs and stuff, like, you know, playing through WoW, I, you know, go and, and make a new character, I'm playing through the same content all over again. In a lot of cases, I'm even picking the same race because I, I know that race. I know the quick ways of getting through the content. I know Human forever. All those kinds of... Fuck <laughs> humans. Humans are so bad. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, in, in Guild Wars 2. Fuck. Oh, in Guild Wars oh, no, 2. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Human forever. Um... But <laughs> I think my second will be a Sura rather than human. <laughs> Turned all yeah. of you into Asura, humans. Asura pretty good. Five characters Asura already. Pretty good. <laughs> but this is, you know, like I said, you know, I'm playing through the exact same content. I'm, it, it, these are the identical quests. Everything is the complete same. But yet, I had ten characters on one server. I had like twenty something characters total. So for and, you, and it's because um, classes, what was your main driving impetus? Like, why did you feel like you wanted to do that again? The the class differences is what makes it fun to play the next the other class 
like I, I you know I've leveled my my elementalist up to seventy four right now I believe mm-hmm. where I'm sitting. Um, oh, I and, need to get to eighty. I, yeah, I, I really really need to make that push to eighty. But I've also been over messing with a guardian because the guardian's actually I'm having a lot of fun with it. Right. I also have played a few levels of mesmer here and there as well. Like mm-hmm. the 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 change in play style from class to class is why alts can be fun in games like this. It has nothing to do with story. I really. I could not possibly care less about the story of Guild Wars 2. So, and I, and, no, it's, and it's, it's, it's not about the story, it's, but it's, the it's fact that you have to play those missions to get the XP to level up. Well, well, no, it's interesting coming from you, Cynic, because you kind of went into this whole idea, or this whole thing with like this idea of, like, story doesn't fucking matter. Like, you didn't play Guild Wars 1 for the story. Yeah. That was not why you played it. And, and And the thing about Guild Wars 2 is, that, yes, those, those are pretty much the same beats. You're still picking the same decisions. Um, but... There's also a really cool button down in the bottom right hand corner that lets you skip all the cutscenes, and so you can oh, yeah. power I, through I that as fast that as you can. My argument, Noob's argument, was about the story. My argument was that the one story oh, I, beat. Why did I meant st- I meant mis- missions, well, not yeah. story? Just like um, the story. Oh, my line argument was that missions. one story beat was more interesting to me than the entire gameplay of the stories before that. I, for me, the story isn't replayable because it's fucking boring in terms of gameplay. It wasn't interesting from start right. to finish. That's why, like the missions, as they get See, more I streamlined, you are going to fucking get... boring in terms of gameplay. See, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I could I could go back opinions. and do Thunderhead Keep right now right. and fucking opinions. have fun. And, and that's, that's I, I, guess, I guess opinions. that's where it comes from. Is like where where you are putting the emphasis on gameplay is on the story beats and and what you're doing throughout the stories. Where I put the emphasis on gameplay is on how the class itself plays. Right. And, and so I think that's more of a personal personal preference it's, thing. It's kind of interesting to me because I, I remember, and I've brought this up multiple times over the run of the Lincoln cast, but I've always asked for a PvP character that comes to you at level 80 and that you can play right. in Wolves as well. But not PvE, obviously, but PvP in Wolves as well. Like if I can get a character slot that give me a level 80 character that I can Wolf of with, that would be awesome. And maybe we'll talk about Shin Boy's quest in a bit here. But, oh, God. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> I, I'm interested to hear how that's going. But... For me, it's it's weird because playing a new class from first principles, which is like from level one to eighty, is n- the fact that I can get a level eighty P- structured PvP character from a level two PvE character kind of invalidates that point for me because the reason I would want to play a class from one to eighty would be to learn it, um, but I could do that learning in PvP. Like I can do the the bot the the um the huge jump in and, and, and get fucking owned for the first 15 levels of me or 15 hours of me playing a new class in PvP. Not that I necessarily do that. I probably am a person who'd play the first 30 levels of the new class just to see how it is. But it's somewhat invalidated. Like, I, I can get that straight away. But the problem is Wolf Love. Sorry? The problem is World versus World. And World versus, versus World. world. Um, and obviously I, I, what I can do is do what Shinbo is doing. Shinbo, can, can you run me through what you're oh, doing? Jesus Christ. <laughs> this is painful. Um, I'm taking a character from level two to level eighty in World v. World, and it is not. Going oh well. god! It's not going well. This is the interesting part. Well, tell me okay. how it's going. It's so. It's, so you made a guardian, the, right? Uh, like no, no ranger. Oh, a ranger. Okay. Um. Yeah. Which I think might have been my first mistake. But anyway. <laughs> um. Not not the ranger, just the ranger specifically in World v. World. Right. Anyway. Um. Yeah. It's at first it was kind of tough to unlock skills, so I just ended up like. Grinding the raptors outside the base and whatever. Um, oh right, whatever borderlands. Yeah, because again, you start with like fuck all skills in your skill bar. You have to earn them through doing the yeah. weapon shit. If you've forgotten, and then them. my favorite moment so far: some scrub tried to take me down because I was farming these raptors, and I killed him with nothing but my auto attack <laughs> and my shield. <laughs> oh great! <laughs> I then proceeded to slash dance on his body. <laughs> um. But so you're finding that what levels just aren't coming fast enough? Like, what's the main problem here? I don't like Rovi World. That's the main problem here. Oh, sick burn! That's oh wow. That's the main problem here. I wasn't expecting that. Like, it is fucking poorly designed. So, what parts of it do state. you find? I, I just as a side to our, our main topic here, but what, what parts of it do you find poorly designed? Everything, literally everything. So okay. So what are your main? We're saying there's a lot. What would you point to? Saying saying there's that's a lot to do. Um. There's too much to do. People might say, okay, that's not a downside. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, there's too much to do to the point where it's goddamn near impossible to stay organized. I love that point because that's actually a point I have about Guild Wars 2 in general. Um, so we've talked about the personal story and obviously that that's definitely a side of things that inter- like opinions will be split on. I think 
the gameplay from it is fucking terrible. But another part of it is I still haven't done all the explore mode parts in Guild Wars 2, right? Uh, and that's actually an element of PvE I absolutely fucking love. Uh, I love doing dungeons. I love doing the explore modes of dungeons. I think they're incredibly well designed for the most part from the ones I've done. Um, yeah, most, most of them as a whole are well designed. There's a broken boss fight here and there. Yeah. But as a whole, a lot of them are really good. They're really good. Um, but the problem is, and this is obviously a problem that Star Wars had itself, is that I am Australian. I'm on a American server because that's where my guild is, and I, and I wouldn't leave anyway because I, I like our guild. Um, but at the same time, I guesting's not in, so I can't go to an Australian server. So that's out of the question, which I was hoping to do, and half the reason I went um, to an American server. You can guest with dungeons, by the way. Oh, really? So, but you have to be in a team with them already. Uh, dun- yeah, dungeons are independent of regular servers. So, say you had a friend who was on just for argument's sake a yep. European server, and mm-hmm. you wanted to group with them, they can come into your dungeon with you, independent of the quote unquote guesting system. Right, but they you have to be in the same party as them, right? Yeah, but you can party across servers. So this is the point I'm coming to. The fact that I can't find or well, play with anyone in my immediate vicinity from my own country, for the most part, being Australian on, on Yak's Bend, um, and I can't guest onto, I think it was, I think it was a Sorrow's Furnace? Or what, what, the, don't ask me. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, the, the, there's one of the servers has a shitload of Australians on it. I can't guest there. But my main gripe is there's no dungeon fighter. There's no group fi- party finder. There's no way for me to go, hey, I want to do explore mode dungeons with a team of people who know what the fuck they're doing over voice right here, right now. I don't, there's no way for me there's to There's like do. a pseudo system, but it's one, it's not as like full as it needs to be. And two, no one uses it. What is it? it? There is the looking for group thing tab on the uh, the friends list. Right. Where if it'll show everyone in that area who's looking for group, and if people are smart and they want to do a dungeon, they'll go stand outside or at least go into that area mm-hmm. and set themselves to looking for group. Right. But one that's not. But what are they looking for group two, for? No like, one does are they it. Looking for story mode. Are they looking for explore mode. Which path do they want to do? Um, that's why you just PM them. Yeah. Just like, and and, and you, is that an effective way of grouping dog. up in in PvP? Make sure. Make sure it's really effective if you spell dog D A W G. Um, so this is the part of it. Like, uh, does Guild Wars 2 have an endgame? Yeah, sure. But is it effective? Is it does it do what I need to do? Is it compelling? Um, I I can't group up for a start, even though I want to do dungeons. I I I can't find a group. Well, it's partially your own fault. It's partially my fault for being Australian, but to some extent, I you'd expect a game. Yeah, God, have, be more American. Like people criticize Star Wars. Yeah. for America's not having a, a dungeon finder of whatever you call them. I am criticizing Guild Wars yeah. for having the same thing, like the same lack. Oh, I, and, and I absolutely agree with you. Like, I, 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 mean, I agree. I was, too. I was, I was one of those people. All the time. I was one of those people who, like, that was one of the reasons I quit Star Wars was because I didn't have a dungeon finder. And you know, with Guild Wars Two not having one, the only reason I would not quit Guild Wars Two for not having a dungeon finder is I don't have to keep paying them monthly. True. Like that's the only reason. Well, if I was paying there, them a monthly, I have a dungeon game, finder for you. <laughs> Just PM me. Well, well, like, what do you mean you would quit or you would like? You would, like what, what I, I, I I would do if if I had to pay a monthly fee for Guild Wars Two and there was no Dungeon Finder, I would have hit Mac hit, hit Little Lady at some point, which I obviously still have not yet done. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would have. Oh, you're not level eighty either. No, no, I'm not. you're actually surprisingly oh, close to level. You guys should play together. Seventy one, seventy three. I, I would have stopped playing the game. I would have ended my subscription, and I would have gone back to WoW. Right. Because uh, WoW has a, a Dungeon Finder. Because it's one of the deadly sins, right? It's now one of the deadly yeah. sins to have a. It's, it's, it's something. It's something that like, as much as some people don't like the idea of it, and developers, you know, Star Wars, they tried to say that like one of the reasons why they didn't want to have it is for you know, um, for community reasons to kind of keep the community close and all all that. It's it just doesn't make any sense. It's something you have to no. have now. Well, they they were specifically talking about a cross server. Dungeon Finder, they didn't oh, want to have. Okay. They wanted to keep the community of the server intact. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's why when they included a, a Dungeon Finder, finally they kept it um, single server. Uh, um, but it's something that you know, in, the, in this day and age, with an MMO, you have to have it. If you've got dungeons, you've got to have a quick way for people to get into them. Yeah, like so those days of 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 you know spamming in general chat, you know, looking for group like that's those days are gone. Yeah, those uh, LGF. Yeah, or no, no, LFG. LFG. LF, LFG. LFG. Oh my god! Oh yep. my god! Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, so this god is damn the, it, back to my point. So I, I'm in a situation where I've done all the PV I wanted to, aside, aside from the story mode for Asura, which I want to see because they're snarky bastards. Um, so 
I've, I've done all of that. I've done all the story modes for all the dungeons. And I, I swear those are only doable once, except for maybe Twilight Arbor, which is awesome. And Citadel Flame. Twilight Arbor is pretty great. Um, I think my Twilight Arbor might be bugged to the point where I need to do it again. Oh, wow. That, that's great. <laughs> but yeah, Citadel Flame and Twilight Arbor are fantastic dungeons in story mode. I'd do them over uh, and over. Sorrow's Embrace is good too, except for the second to last boss. Mm, but the, oh, yeah. The bosses are fantastic. Story mode is, not end game. Story mode is definitely not endgame. Sorry, which one? Story, story mode? mode, yeah. There is a person at level 71. Yeah, so uh, I've done all the story modes of dungeons. I've done a shitload of structured PvP. <laughs> I've done a much world versus world as I want to do, for better or worse. And so the only th- thing in Endgame that I'd want to do from here on is dungeons, and I can't do that either because of lack of dungeon fighters. So is there a game, Endgame Guild Wars 2 for me? No, not really. That, at is all. Is there... But the thing is, you could do dungeons if you were playing on a server where you lived. Like, uh, but even then, it would be a case of me having to get on and spend an hour or so looking for a group. Trying to find people, yeah. right? It's not really an hour. Because of the way the class system works is, you know, fairly quick. Uh, that's yeah, true. because I can go with anyone, but what path do they want to do? That, that's, that's like a, Yo, You just roll the dice, man. Just roll the dice. And I, is that something, I, for me, that's something I want to do because I just need the tokens for uh, Corticus Mana, for example. I haven't done any of the paths yet, so I don't know if there's like, one I prefer. So I wouldn't mind doing any of it. But I've, I've, I've got the situation... I prefer none of them, in case you're wondering. <laughs> I've got a situation where I've, I've left my character just outside Corticus Mana and, and logged in multiple times during the day just to see how many people are standing outside Corticus Mana and looking for a group. And in a lot of cases, they're not even looking for groups because I know that Dungeons hard and a lot of people are coming in pre-grouped um there's only a couple of cases where i've seen guys actually actively looking for explorer mode group in for quarter Christmas manner and that's in the expend and that's at multiple times during the day where i checked so it's, it's does give us to have an end game uh yeah but is it an effective end game probably i don't know i i, I would say no at, le- at least to a lot of stuff i, w- I would say it's, it's not an effective end game for everybody yeah and, and this, I obviously say, i'm playing I think devil's it's really effective for me for someone who loves doing all the different um mm-hmm explorable paths and then once you do an explorable path trying to say okay how could we do that better and, and going yeah. back and repeating it until you get it down exactly and and, and i'm playing devil's advocate I, I still love structure pp when i'm with a team and I, that is fantastic but obviously there's a huge amount of things missing from there which we talked about last week um and i love fucking exploring my dungeons and i would do those as almost as much as i would structure pvp and i'd do those with my guild and I, I, so, so, so what you're saying is like you really really enjoy like what you can do in the end game so far you just don't enjoy the fact that you have a hard time like starting it up yeah and that's a huge element of it because now that i have some things resembling work and I have a bunch of other stuff i want to do like reading i don't have the time to sit here on my ass looking for group for two to yeah. three hours and, yeah you and, 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 and I'll, reading. I'll absolutely agree with you on that too because like that's one of the biggest reasons again going back to star wars why i quit that is because like i you know working a job and having a kid at home and everything like i only have so much time to play a game tonight in a night and if i've got you know maybe an hour or two to play and i want to go run a dungeon like that's just not feasible mm-hmm. yeah so like in that respect i'll absolutely agree with you but however says the guy who go- turned down my invite <laughs> I, I at the time like the only time i had run that place i was thinking four hours uh Oh man! <laughs> doing a dungeon for the first time with a group of people who know what they're who doing, don't know who don't know, who, who don't like, know the dungeon, but know what they're doing in terms of their class, is my favorite thing in Guild Wars Two. By yeah, far. that's what we we're doing. Uh, I've been running with Revan and Thurb in COE because Thurb wants the um, some gear from there, right. and like the three of us plus usually whoever two other people we bring, mm-hmm. um, all know what we're doing. Yeah, but we don't know those. So paths. how long does it take it's you been great. for path? Hour and a half ish. Okay, that's not too bad. And same with us when we did Honor of the Waves with about an hour and a half to two hours when we did it without knowing what was happening. No, that, and that's awesome. That's fantastic. And that's my favorite thing yeah. in Guild Wars 2. And, and that's one of the reasons why I really, really hope that they are like just fucking fast and furious on, on releasing more and more and more of these dungeons just to keep, keep that feel going. But uh, to me, right? Like, so what they've done so far and what they've ex- displayed in doing, and it's awesome because that for the people who are doing world completion especially, but they've spent these this first month and a week fixing shit that should well, that to make it work as they as intended going forward so stuff like uh broken skill points and skills weren't working properly and stuff like that that's what they've been spending this oh, first God. month and a half doing um but if you ask me and as we said last week from the start um i love gear wars 2 i love the way it works i think it's a good fucking game i didn't need them to it's, do it's all still that. my favorite game i i still like it well i didn't need lot. them to do that i i don't mind this shit broken um out in the middle of nowhere because what i'd rather than have spent that month doing would be put, doing like just the features that they're missing stuff like um Did- custom matches for for structured pvp um what's his face Ex- 
uh, ex- not explorable mode, uh, viewer mode, like match view, like viewing matches, like post game for, for structure PvP, dungeon finder. If they spent the first month just doing those three things, and I, and I refuse to believe that Arena as a whole company, if actually aiming for it, couldn't have achieved those three things in one one half months. That I would have been in a much different place right now than I am. Well, I mean, the difference is like, what is it called? That is again stuff for people who are usually max level, but like the filling at skill points. As someone who did maxing out zones as the primary form of leveling, worst idea. Those fucking, those fucking skills. No, it's the best idea. What are you talking <laughs> it's about? The slowest way to level one hundred percent areas. What do you what? Except. Except the entire time I was playing regularly, I was always higher level than you. So what? Uh, that's what I got to eighty well that's before true. you guys. The person no, who's no, the no, lowest no. level here is telling us how to level. level. Yeah, great. <laughs> I stopped playing. Fuck you. I was sh- I was higher than you, Shin Boy, for a good amount of time. Also, uh-huh. the person uh, who's the lowest level here is the one talking about endgame. Uh-huh. What? Yeah. Go no, on. no. But the thing is, like, if you run into one of those things while trying to one hundred percent zone, that is absolutely the worst feeling ever, and you kind of want to just stop playing there. Because you've ran into an impassable block. Yeah. And like, like if, if you're one of those checklift zone. people, that right. is a huge problem. Yeah, but, you, and you don't want to move and, on to the next zone until... How, how about the thousands right. of people who aren't checklist people, who don't bother hunting in the world, who stop, Well, who I don't care about come across people, a deadly so sin okay. like not having a dungeon finder? I don't know. Either way, I, th- I, I wonder why I don't like the story. It might be because for the very first half until, until that uh, battle for Lion's Arch or whatever it's called happens, mm-hmm. I always felt like I actually cared about the overarching story. Maybe not the specific of it, uh, specifics of it, but I, like, I, I still do care about the overarching story. Uh, un- under- I, I, I understood the point of that, but at, at the point at least I'm at, which is like level 70 personal story missions, and I'm just at that area between Lion's Arch and Ore. It felt like I'm doing these missions without understanding the purpose, and it feels like, okay, you go and kill A, B, C, and then come back in the next mission. And for some reason, even in the original Guild Wars, there were missions like that, but I still felt some sort of overarching purpose, and that motivated me to continue to do stuff. And I feel like that's really lacking that, and end game content in terms of replay value is definitely a lot worse because of that so there's one last thing i want to touch on because i do want to give these guys a chance to at least ruminate and respond to my main criticisms of game wars 2's end game um is something that is very difficult to fix and probably something they might not ever end up fixing but one of the main things which is really cool about the idea of Guild wars 2 going into it was the whole thing about um, legendary weapons and endgame armor being doable on your own time. Not having to group up, not having to to play with other people, but being able to be pursuable by yourself. Um, stuff like uh, tokens for dungeons. I, I would love to be able to get those without having to find people if I even need to. Like, for example... No, see, I don't agree with that like at all. Uh, well... The main thing with me is obviously that can be remedied by having a dungeon fighter because I wouldn't have a problem finding groups and I could get the tokens on myself, right? But mm-hmm. um, for things like story missions, and some people have found an impasse where, like, especially I've heard Elementalists have some problems with some parts of the um, story missions around level 50 or so. Um, whether that's true or not is, is a different case. But there's definitely parts of, of, along the way of Guild Wars 2 um, for example, if I have four people in a dungeon team and I might want to f- I might not want a random as the fifth, where I wouldn't mind there being henchmen again. Right. Uh, I wouldn't mind. I mentioned that. henchmen oh, no. a long time ago and it's very difficult now, for them if to you put say in. Heroes, now we're talking. Yeah, heroes. Yeah. That would be awesome. Like the, it's very difficult to put in, and I can respect them having not done it so far. But my worry is that they'll never do it. And I would have loved to be able to do dungeon runs by myself. I would love to be able to program for heroes to be able to do dungeon runs by myself. But you have That'd to limit it because I would say in regular ass PVE, not allowed. Yeah, I agree. Right, right, right. There's not like people in running dungeons, around. Just specific but, dungeons. but instances, specifically instances. Right. So personal story quests and dungeons that I can think of right now, that would be awesome to be have to have heroes. Because I mean, like, have any of you ever done personal story quest? Like going in a group, or is it mostly? No, I, I. You do it mostly alone. The I've, I've never done story. it. Right. It's like the entire, the, the entire game Except says, like, okay, you can thing. do all of the content alone, except for the stuff that lets you get the cool stuff. You have to do it. Yeah, I can't get dungeon tokens alone. Right. And, and, I, and I want like, those DM you, tokens. But you can do, like, all the, the karma armor and stuff alone. And, um, Great. 
the one I don't want. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you, let's you, not, let's you, not forget you, here. This is a uh, this is a massively multiplayer yes, online it, it game. Right, but but for a game that both like you can, you get can do all everything stats, alone. No, you can get all of the stats you want by yourself. Yes, you can. Exactly. Cross. If we're right, talking yeah. strictly skins that skins. you need to group for, yeah. I don't think that's a valid argument because you can get the stats. Somewhere else. Well, look yeah. at but, this way, but if right? You they, say, have, um, they have to lock some stuff up. It comes back to you play how you want to play, right? That's one of the core tenets of Guild Wars 2. And uh, like coupled with that, in PvE, from 1 to 80, doing only the actual PvE. I'm not talking about um, personal story stuff. And you can actually do personal story stuff this way. You can do it entirely alone. Entire way. Sometimes right, I just, so I did it. Sometimes I don't feel like grouping yeah. with people. Like even if if it's it's something locked behind grouping people because they're giving me interesting ways of playing. Like for example, having to work together, like Ghost Eater, for example, as the dungeon, using those traps together as a group. You couldn't do that with NPCs. But um, if I don't feel like grouping up, I should have something to do that comes goes towards the items I want that I can do by myself. Like nope, completely disagree. I, 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 yeah, I, I, I absolutely agree. disagree. I this, agree. this game, with this because, this game, first and foremost, like, I, is I a multiplayer game. Oh, yeah, yeah, this game is first right, and foremost but, a multiplayer game, and mm-hmm. and and it does have it does have op- like a lot of options in there in, for the things that you can do as a single player. But they can't just make everything available as a single player because otherwise you're just going to make meaning, it that much fucking harder to find no, a reason to do anything because sure. everyone just wants to play by themselves. Just end game stuff is all multiplayer. You. Like, is there any single player end game stuff you can do, like by yourself? That's a very good question. Karma, that's about it. That's a very good question, yeah. Nicaragua. <laughs> like, are there? If you're, if you're like, coming I'm into an MMO, karma RPG, stuff, expecting to play by yourself. Yeah, um, I mean, no, no, like, I'm just saying, again, like, because, I'll, again, 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 I'll compare this to 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 WoW. Like, you you get to end game in that game. What is there to do single player? You can do dailies. Um. Yeah. Is that a good thing? Is that yeah, a good because thing? this is this is an MMO. I, this is not a single player RPG. If well, you want, if you want to, no, if but the way they back, treat it, like let's look you back can do Wars everything 1. up to now by yourself, but now you have to group up with everyone. Guild Wars was a co op online RPG. Specifically, co op was were the main focus when it first came out. But they released Heroes, and that's how a lot of people spent their end game with Heroes, rolling by themselves. Right. But again, this I goes back to my argument that I brought up numerous times because, because, like, no one wanted to group with other people. At all. Guild, no, no, no. Guild no. There were one. still plenty of zones where you needed other people. Just the difference is there were more zones available that you could do alone. Yeah. This goes back to my no, argument like I brought up numerous time. times on this podcast, and that is that Guild Wars 1 or Guild Wars 2 cannot be compared to Guild Wars 1 on a mechanics level because Guild Wars 1 was not an MMO. But we're not talking about only a mechanics level. We're talking about a how you play level. And as right. Nubarama brought up a really good question you cannot please everyone all the what time. What can you do alone no. at level 80? We are talking about. Mechanics. I'm not saying you're, make, you're talking make about the inclusion of only... heroes or mercenaries or whatever, and and that is a mechanics level, and that is something that does not work. But in of course, that was that was a solution. You're not looking at the problem. Like for me, I said, hey, dungeon find is one solution. Maybe another solution is having heroes and stuff to let me do stuff I want to do at level eighty. I want to do that stuff alone, or maybe I'm on with no one else is online. Dungeon find would be one solution to the for the dungeon problem, for example. Maybe heroes with no, another solution. I don't know if it is possible because those dungeons are obviously built with co-op in mind. But that that I, the I problem guess, is there's nothing for me to do alone at level eighty. I, knew I, guess the, the I don't only, think he's saying everything should be for one person. It's just saying there should be more available content for right, single I, player people. I, I guess what I'm what, I, what the only thing I can really say to that is that is not a problem with Guild Wars Two. I don't feel like that's a problem at all. But if that is a problem, it is a problem with MMOs. Yeah, I completely agree. Because I, they are in the MMOs. Valid. Yep. That's a valid argument. And does that mean that Gear Wars 2 has they an end game for those people who do want it, who are on at weird times of day or are do you want to do stuff alone? Does it have an end game for those people? Well, for me, it's structured PvP. I don't mind I, rolling with randoms. I would, I would, I would say that that if you are going into an MMO expecting to have a an end game available to you to play 100% by yourself and get everything that you absolutely want to get, no. That is something that is absolutely What about the people who have been playing Guild Wars 1 a long time and that makes up a huge and beyond, amount of beyond the player that, base and they're coming in? Let's, for example, take into consideration during an argument that you can't compare the two because they are different genres specifically. But the fact that they, we couldn't come up with an answer of what you can do alone, that that's a problem. In but that's but not again, a game problem. That's, that's, that's not a, a game problem. problem. That, that, and, and again, I don't think that's a genre problem. I, th- I think that's a genre-defining thing. I, I don't... 
I don't agree. Because well, if, considering if you are, because if you are wanting to, to play your game by yourself, and you could very well, Cynic, do that, you don't agree. You also they? haven't played any other MMOs, really. Well, it, it's <laughs> no. It is, you say well, no. That, this the is thing like is saying, hey, we play... couldn't get to the moon because you couldn't come up with a good propulsion system. It must not be possible. No, no. What? The, 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 the ability to play from one to eighty by yourself, and then suddenly now you're required to do um, multiplayer. I think you're you're looking at that in a vacuum. Playing one to eighty is an option. You absolutely have plenty of ways to play the game. Right, the way that, why the are way they that, taking away the option? You have plenty of ways of play playing the game the way the MMOs are intended to be played, which is with other people. And in fact, Guild Wars Two goes a long hey guys, way towards I making that my easier. level eighty a whole bunch this week by myself. Yeah, that's that's true. What did you do by yourself to this week, Jim Boy? I've been working towards world completion and having a great time. Cool. Uh, and that, like, that's I, I will, one thing you can argue, do by yourself. Like, as a I will player. argue that that the like. Well, not so much dungeons, but we had been running a lot of the same dungeons. So, like, the game had gotten kind of stale. Mm-hmm. Not, I mean, that's fair enough. Doing the same the stuff over and over is um, gets stale. Yeah, especially since it was shit that I didn't really want gear for. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was just like, you know what? I'm sitting here at sixty percent. I want that gold star next to my name. I'm gonna try and get this. <laughs> and while just aimlessly wandering around, going, okay, I'm gonna finish this area. I have you know forty percent of it done already just by going through it or whatever. I would say that I've like re fallen in love with the design at level 80 by myself. So we're kind of going around in circles now. Um, I, I guess we can kind of round out the argument of whether Guild Wars 2 has an end game. Does anyone have any closing statements? Like, for, to, as opposed to, to Shin Boy's thing right there, I would say that that's fantastic that you found that. Um, what I found as a counterpoint was that um, in doing the stuff I wanted to do from level 1 to 80, and literally going through every zone in the air in the entire Guild Wars 2, stuff for level 80. except for Harathi Hinterlands, um, I don't think I would have that same experience at all. But see, like, there's some I, areas... I, I like Shin Boy Love into... exploring, so that's a good thing for me. But I could see how, like, people like Cynic, who've, who've got their fill of the place, mm-hmm. has nothing left to do, if, see, especially like, if they have weird hours like Cynic. And is this like, Australian? For, for me, though, like, the Char 20, 15 to 25 area... Yep. I'm level 80. I have not even walked into that area. Awesome. I don't even know what it's called. It's a great awesome area. It's the same <laughs> um, as... Is, well, non, you can get that from the non area. Anyway, the point is, yeah, I, I, I can know, understand. But I'm, my point is, like, like that stuff, even though I'm level 80 mm-hmm. and have played, like, 300 hours or something on that character, yep. is going to be all new. But that's, that's, so that's new content. But I don't have that experience because I've been there and I've done the stuff there. I've done all the... Hard, well, a lot of the hard quests there, the ones I wanted to do. What's your world completion percentage? Uh, mine's only, like, 47, maybe 50%. Then bullshit, you've seen all that I stuff. have, because I don't go out of my way well, to get yeah, points of interest. Yeah, he doesn't have to do the, yeah. And remember what the, the completions are. They're, they're waypoints, points of interest, heart quests, and vistas. How many heart quests have you done? I do, like, maybe half to a third of the heart quests per area. I do fucking barely any of the point of interest, maybe even one or two in the entire area. I get all the waypoints. That's my main See, thing. actually, I actually, I started out hating points of interest. Now I really like them, because they actually lead you to some really interesting places, both Especially from, like, like, the underground A dynamic things. event. Yeah, the underwater ones well, from, as well. They're really cool. Well, yeah, not only that, but... From a dynamic they, event they need perspective, some, and also from a lore perspective, a lot of them are interesting. Mm. Well, and even just from a visual perspective, like, a lot of them are just really cool-looking yeah. places. And, and that's... And I've, yeah. I've found that as I go along, especially for Ara. I've definitely done more of this stuff. Like, I've, I've felt more of a want to go to the distance because there's places in or that just look absolutely spectacular even from a distance and you kind of want to see that stuff up close. But mm. like again, yeah, I, I've got 47% work completion because I didn't do all the points of interest. I didn't do all the vistas and I didn't, and I don't feel like I want to do that. Like, I don't, I don't look at it and go, Hey, will I go, will I log into Guild Wars 2 as opposed to reading Leviathan wakes? Um, and walk over to a or random just area. Or the that, Leviathan. Yeah, I, I, or, yeah, or, and walk over to a random area that I've been to before and I've seen all the surface content, then look for the weird underground areas and spend my time doing that. I don't feel like... See, I'm, I'm really there. enjoying looking for the weird underground stuff. And, and some of it is really cool. Like, the ones I stumbled over were really awesome. I, I stumbled upon a uh, skill point challenge and I forgot what area it was. Blood Tide Coast, maybe? Or maybe Mount Maelstrom? Mm-hmm. I don't remember. Mount Maelstrom is such an awesome recognize. area. Mount Maelstrom, um, yeah, that, that area is really like, cool. It was like a whole bunch of collection of like pirate ships on like an island, I think. Anyway, mm-hmm. and you go downstairs, and you have to go through like a whole bunch of different decks, and you go downstairs, and there's just a whole. It's like a semi-flooded area. And there's just a whole bunch of like dead pirate like ghosts just wandering about as if they're still alive. Oh, I've been there. Like yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. And there's like um, ghost like 
chest with like ghost gold and like a big yep. ghost throne and everything. Yeah. That area was fantastic. That was and I would cool. not have found it if I wasn't 100% in that area. I found that by accident, which is awesome. And I'm happy that there's still areas out there that I haven't found. But again, will I log into the game and just go out and seeking those areas? Probably not. Yeah, good. Oh, well, that's what I'm doing because mm. now that I'm actually expl- – I didn't do that from, from 1 to 80 and I was like, yeah, there's kind of not a lot. But now that well, I'm actually and- going through everything, I'm starting to see all that cool extra stuff yeah. and I'm really do- enjoying it. Do you think maybe one thing this game would benefit from is um, a, a content addition similar to the way that uh, The Secret World is handling it where like when they do release c- content updates, um, you know, new quest lines or, or what have you – um, instead of putting it in the in-game zone area and having it be there strictly for you know the max level players, maybe pepper those those new quest lines when they add them in throughout the world and kind of make players want to go and, and explore these areas that they maybe lost over the first time around or maybe never had a chance to get to in the first place. I, I think um, I, I mean, we kind of had the same idea before the game launched. Um, I think. For example, Hrathi Hinterlands. That's like a perfect example. I never went up there and nor cared about that area because nothing I had pointed me over there. Because centaurs, man. I only went there because I think Suki I run a told me that it has pretty cool karma <laughs> gear for the for the level that that it's available at. So it's got good karma gear, and that's the only reason I went there. Um, the, it's actually a disgusting. Place it, it looks. To look at. Uh, it's it's a hard place. To, well, it's it's got a lot of centaurs. Anyway, um, but the point is. It just Durin's right. Around. I would love for there to be dynamic events and like crazy, weird, random es- es- esoteric stuff. I-, I didn't esoteric stuff um, that leads you to the secret areas. Like, how cool would that be if like there was an NPC that could spawn and totally ran towards that underground pirate area, like a rabbit or something, or not a rabbit, but like a, a girl who's lost her father or something who's been captured by ghost pirates or some some shit like that. Yeah. Don't yeah. you guys ever remember the rabbit that you follow in Eye of the North and it leads to a cave full of like level thirty things and yes. then you get massacred? Yes. <laughs> <I'm so laughs> anyway, was it Draco Lake? Upon... Yeah, it was Draco Lake. <laughs> yeah. Um, I did stumble upon something kind of like mm. that in one of those piratey areas where it's like you have to save. Um, Order of the Whispers, like a uh, person who's oh. being held by pirates, and you go in, and you have to like incite a mutiny, and you like go oh, inside I, this like whole little secret cave and everything in, that you can't get in otherwise unless the dynamic event is running. In like Kessex Hills, for example, there's like a little hole, and then there's a little boy named Jimmy or something, and he's yell, "I fall oh, down that this one, hole." Yep. And and then you go to save him, and See, then I did I forgot that the, you have to fall, so I just fell and died. Stuff like that to respond so, is exactly so, what I want to see. For stuff like that. So, Shin, Shin Boy, going back to what you were talking about, uh-huh. um, talking about zones like that that are only opened whenever a, uh, a dynamic event is, is triggered. Mm-hmm. Fuck the Arena Net developer who decided it was a good idea to put skill points behind those goddamn oh God. gates. Oh, no, see. Fuck <laughs> those guys. Just they like should lose their goddamn area. jobs. <laughs> oh, God. But anyway, I, I think we kind of, we've kind of looked at the argument from both sides now. Like, for example, Durin and Chimboy definitely have some good arguments. Like, right? I I don't think the arguments no longer like there's no end game. It just there should be more. Is end the end game for you? Is the end game for you? Right. Uh, and, what and would you like to be see? That's something you have to make at a personal level. Yeah. Right? yeah well, and I, I, think I think this will be an I, interesting uh, discussion to come back to maybe six months from now mm-hmm. when I hope to God some kind of content has been released. Yeah. Or I mean, stuff we can like see Dungeon kind of what, the, what their content pipeline is. Like what, what's and, and what's your personal cut that, of that leads to our um, expansion talk cast. <laughs> What's that happening, Shin Boy? No, like my, my point is that like Cynic and I pretty much made the same argument for and against. Yeah. Like our like yeah. I said that like going back and doing all the hundred percent work. Right, they're subjective. Is like a very is a very valid form of mm-hmm. endgame, While Cynic says it's not for yeah. him, and as, so. it's it's uh, totally awesome and why I wanted to have this debate in the first place because. There's definitely a lot of people out there who say Guild Wars 2 doesn't have an endgame. And if so, consider what those guys have said. They're, you've been doing the endgame the whole time through, and did you like any of that stuff? Maybe you want to re-experience some stuff? Maybe there's a bunch of stuff out there. In fact, I bet you there's a bunch of other stuff, stuff out there that you might like that you haven't even seen yet. For example, a bunch of those... Also, that, that ghost house in that one chart area. I have no idea how to... Like, there's a ghost house in that place. Ghost house. There's, there's, there's um, a heart quest in uh, Iron... Marches, right. maybe I think. Um, oh, where, where, there's where like you a whole go, bunch like... of ghosts, and like you need to like escort them back to their bodies. Mm-hmm. And there's right. a house there. Oh, yeah. That, like you can't walk no, in you the can't. front door. I, I don't think you can get into the house. It's the chick comes out of the house, no. and uh, you you can go in the back door. Oh, really? Quite easily. Okay. It's just wide open. Okay. But the, the, that that event chain is like a chick comes out of the house, 
and she oh, okay. she curses the children. Oh man, it's so weird. It's freakily dark and awesome. Fire Fire March Rise is my favorite area. See, I, I 100%ed Rise? that area without ever running into that. So now I kind of want to oh, go no, back no, and yeah. see it's, it. it's not the area that COF is in. No, no, it's not. Oh, wait. No, it's, if it's I, I Iron March. Yeah, it's yes. the one before that. It's yep. the one you have to go it's through Iron to Marches, get to. I remember I just 100%ed that today. Mm. Um, All right, then, so it's yeah, not Fire Rise. Like, like, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I had, it was really cool because I was escorting a whole bunch of ghosts, and I just recently got the um, the AC shield. Yep. That's, so, yeah. and, it, and it was at night. So it was all, I have like the ghost skull on it and like the ghost flames coming off and I actually sort of fit in. That's cool. It's kind of cool. I, so there's like, there's a lot of stuff like that where, um. That was one of the things where I realized I was sort of falling back in love with the design. The, right. I, I think like the, the case for like exploration yeah. as end game is really good, but like that's what I really loved doing. But it's, it's a good, up. it's, it's a good explanation for end game if that's your thing. Right. And if you haven't seen that before, because again, that story, I, I've seen that area before. I've I've done that event because I was wandering through that area to see what stuff was there that I would like, and so for, for me I, I'm not interested in going back and re-experiencing that. Um, so I, I guess what it comes down to is there there is definitely there is end game to be had in this yeah. game. How much end game depends on how much of it you did leading up to exactly. It's leveling. a double it's a double edged sword. Like Guild Wars yeah. Two has been built upon a concept that has a positive and a negative. One side is you do the end game all the way through and you have an awesome time from start to finish. Except for maybe the personal story. And then the other side is um, if you've done all the stuff all the way through, then looking back at it, you kind of have nothing to do. Which is kind of crazy. Uh, you have less to do. You have less to do. Absolutely less. Yeah, less to do, but still stuff to do. For example, if I ever went back and did decide to go up world completion, which I probably would do if I won a legendary weapon, because apparently those gifts of exploration can be used as wild cards or something like that. Uh, no, they're required. Oh, they're required. So, yeah. So, you'd want the legendary weapons. Maybe if I ever wanted to get Twilight, I'd probably do that. But aside from that... Which, by the way, I just watched the video for that. I want uh, Mr. Yakington and, oh and, and... Twilight? I need the, Twilight. The, the right. Twilight, right? right? I, yeah, I need Twilight now. Twilight? Right? Fuck my Crazy. Ellie. I'm loving right? my Guardian because I want that Twilight. <laughs> right? Let's fucking go. I love that Oh, thing. it's so like, beautiful. Who, who, would get, who, who would get Sunrise before Twilight? Who would get Sunrise? Like, like insane people. <laughs> <laughs> who would get twilight? What, what comes first? What, what comes first, sunlight or twilight? Uh, well, are you a creationist? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh, so, did you guys so, hear about that guy from but, from Georgia? No, who um, thinks that evolution and the Big Bang theory are lies straight from the deepest pit of hell? But isn't that right. a lot of people? There right. a lot of people think of that. I was going to say, that's a lot of people Most in Georgia. Most people aren't on the, uh, I think it's the Senate Science Committee. Oh, wow. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, oh man. I think, no, I think and those are running unopposed. A lot of scientists out there who, um, their purpose in life is to disprove theories. He also thinks the Earth is but 9,000 years old. <sighs> <laughs> anyway. He's running unopposed I don't know. in Georgia. So new, if any new Brahma, new people are registered Democrats in the state of Georgia, um, run against him. I, Please. I, I, I like video. Wait, no, wait. What? Uh, any closing right, comments okay, about so, uh, Endgame Gears Two? Um, I, I, there's definitely an Endgame. It just, it's. I would like the Endgame to be as varied as it was getting to the Endgame. So all of that stuff, you know, the open endedness, like so playing a lot more hard. I think, I think your problem is along. that you don't want it. You don't want it to be as varied because it is. It's um, very varied. You just want it to be more varied. Right, more variables. So, uh, for example, um, if, so calculus. if there was a dungeon it finder, would you happier? What would you want to especially see? With, especially because of, like, explorable zones that I've already gotten while I was leveling. Mm -hmm. I'd really like to see more incentive for people to explore. So, like, Nicholas the Traveler and Professor Yakington. I want them back in Guild Wars 2. Oh, uh, that's not possible. Why not? Why not? Have you, have you been to them at all? <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. That was perfectly oh, done. No. Perfectly done. Um, yeah. Well, okay. I want. I want Nicholas and well, some other Nicholas and some other people. Did you actually want... read read the post on that? Like, no, from, I did not see that. From someone from that. like I, think, I don't remember. They asked ArenaNet what happened to Nicholas the Traveler, and all they said back was he found his way home. Oh, oh shit! Oh. Um, oh. My heart melted a little bit. No. It... <laughs> No, but like just incentives for exploration because like hearing Shinboy's you know talk 
of exploration really makes me want to explore again. And like just incentive for people who've already done areas to come back again to see something new is what I would like to see as the end. Well, a lot of because it like, is that their promise of um, bringing in new dynamic events, taking out old ones, keeping things fresh, which we talked about earlier. Um, because like the most enjoyable part of me leveling was just exploring, yeah. and that was a good way to level. I, I, Something for me that I, I kind of said earlier when the game was coming out, when I had when I had my huge bitch fest about hot quests, which they they've made slightly more bearable since then, um, was that I would have loved if there was straight up a way because um, on your map, if there's like a golden kind of little like circle with a star in it, that means there's an NPC there that you can talk to to start a, a dynamic event chain. Like, I would love to see, and that can be seen from quite far away. I would love to see a like eventually a way to just bring up M if you're in an area and see all the dynamic events going on. I, that would be awesome because I could say, "Yeah, well, I've done well, that one. I've done that one. I've done that it one." It does it on your minimap from like a good distance. But also, I, I, I would, I would, I'd love to see them tell you that that's the case that you can trigger them by talking to those people because I didn't find that out until like level forty or yeah, something. Straight up. Uh, it's, uh, there's there's ways to get me back into exploration because, for example, if I could look at my map when I put in an area and see the dynamic events I haven't done before, that could be awesome, and I'd be I'd be back in. Um, so little things like that, bringing a dun- bringing a dungeon fighter, doing that, like there's there's ways to um, reduce the amount of input we have to put into the game to get stuff out of it, which is obviously things they may be working on as they go f- forward. Um, but hey, that, that, that's that's my point on that. I, 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 I think everyone should be allowed to have heroes and henchmen and run around in PvE with them. Durin. Just full party at eight dudes. Any closing yeah, comments? Full party. Uh, just that uh, to all those people who say that there is no end game in Guild Wars 2 because there are no there's no raid content. They can just fuck <laughs> they can just fuck right off. Like that's that's not in Guild Wars 2. It's not gonna be in Guild Wars 2. Yeah. Fucking get over it, and if you can't go back to go back to where Well, I'm they're supposed. already gone, right? Uh, and I'm not the kind of person to generally say that, but seriously, fuck you. Rating is terrible. Guild Wars 2 has shown me that. <laughs> well, we I'm don't from want the that. East Coast. I'm Doing a dungeon too. is awesome. Try that out. Yeah. Yeah. Five, five man dungeons COE. are that so much more cool. fun than any raid I've ever done. And I've done a lot of raids. Explore. Yeah. Used to be a raid Explore. leader, right? I yep. forgot what they called yep. them. They had something. I was, I was actually a guild leader, but I didn't. Conquistadors. Conquistadors. I was yeah. a guild leader who also read raids. Read. Led, led, led raids, raids. Yeah, it's um, but yeah doing a dungeon leads. run is awesome and you get, do the explorer modes for those guys who want to do raids um they're not yeah. like of course of course they run to my problem which is lack of dungeon fighter but aside from that they're awesome oh, why can't i do explorable mode alone oh. that's something i probably <laughs> well it would be interesting no, if I, could, I, hate well, those people. I could i could definitely I see the people. argument where you shouldn't be able to because right. one of my main things about explorer no, modes no, no. is I mean, get, getting it's the horrible. dungeon gear oh, isn't bugs. isn't really terribly difficult now that they changed right. the way the tokens yeah. work because you get like three runs, one of each path or just one path that's easy, mm-hmm. like three times, like over the course of three days, and that's a piece of gear right there. Yeah. Depending which piece of gear you Pretty want. Pretty much. I I only need to do seventeen runs to get my whole set of armor. That's that's actually really low. Which, when you think would you when you think about it is not bad. Yeah, at all. it's that's right. that's not bad at all. It's for legendary or not legendary, but like really elite armor. And is that's not that's just no, the tokens. Not. That's not even including the amount of gold exotic, they get yeah. along the way, which is would be substantial. Yeah, you get twenty six gold for each, or twenty six silver. Sorry for um each run, um, like each. Yeah, and you get other drops, um, right? Path. And you get drops. Just, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I wouldn't call them particularly good. So, yeah, dungeons I, I just are think out there I, for people who want to At raise. the end of the day, I, I think they should add just a little bit more stuff. For I'm not saying replace stuff you can do with groups with single people things, but just add stuff that single people can do. Like like a solo instance or something where you get like your health and stuff gets like super buffed up and it's like... No. Um, oh, yeah. No, but like something different. Not doesn't have to be dungeons. Just something else. Like, a, a, so, a, a shorter solo instance could be interesting. Hmm. Um, yeah. It's it's a difficult problem, it's, but it's it's definitely one that exists. Like, I, I was shocked when he asked that question. And I didn't have an answer to it, um, and I think that is something that was because no matter what you say, and I, I do agree to some extent about MMOs in general and there being a lack of end game um, single player content as a feature or a, a uh, element of what an MMO is. You have to look back and say, like, I, I don't care about the genre. A bunch of us came from Guild Wars One. That you can't step aside from that. You you shouldn't abandon those people. Uh, you can't really like 
You can't appease everything they want. You could hero hench some of the the hard mode. Henchman is the is a possible solution, as I said earlier, but not the problem. The main problem was people go as one. A lot of us are used to doing stuff alone, and like Jeff Gerstmann is a perfect example of that. He loved Go as one. He likes doing stuff alone, and Go as one let him do that because he could do almost everything with henchmen. Um, whether that's good or bad is up to you. But the fact that a bunch of us had that as a pre- precursor from the first game and don't get that from the second game is an issue. I don't care what MMOs are about. A see, lot of us can't see. I don't see. I don't find it a, an issue at all. Uh, yeah, I, I, well, I would, a ton of the first game, and I would say that 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 was a conscious decision that the uh, Arena Net made mm-hmm. when transitioning from the gameplay because style of Guild Wars One to, be, to right? Guild yeah. Wars Two. It is a conscious yeah. decision. Yeah, I mean, if it, you look it, at every other system in the game, it encourages a social experience, right? Yeah, and and there are, there are there are pluses and minuses to them transitioning over to a more standard, you know, traditional MMO um, gameplay style, and and. That's unfortunately for pe- people who play Guild Wars One. That mm-hmm. is one that that is one thing that lands in in the minus category. Um, and it's unfortunate, but there are a lot of pluses that came along with it. I, I do want to round this out, but there's an interesting point that I just remembered about that. Uh, so a lot of the playing by yourself from Guild Wars Two comes from rolling around PVE by yourself, which you can do from start to finish, um, and grouping up dynamically with people around you. A, a big thing that co- and we talked about this last week so we don't have to talk about it for too long here but a big element of it was arena net was expecting i believe that a ra would be a huge source of um interest for those people who do like playing alone because you can roll around a raw not a raw and and and, and not, well, or not a raw oh, yeah or a raw is just the place nor but yeah um <laughs> in or so you running around by yourself by yourself or dynamically with people having that play by yourself content that's difficult and challenging and interesting i think they fell fat in their faces and i think we said this last week with or in that they didn't deliver that i don't think a single person who has the same background as noob or myself um has been like who has loved playing single player um in Guild Wars one has been satisfied with or yeah i don't really like or either. yeah or is this not that great? I mean, we talked about it last week. Well, I don't, I don't like I don't like or by myself. Yeah. If you get two or three people rolling through or is really really yeah. fun. But there's just a no, a lot of annoying shit in or. Yeah, I was like, I just want to be able to just run past these. Dudes. Yeah, and you could do that in other areas, but or they all have fucking pulls or cripples or there's the Melandra effect or other bullshit that just gets in your way. Um, there's just something with or that just it just doesn't incite replayability or interest for me as a single player level. From single player, sorry. Anyway. But see, like, as bad as it is single player, I feel like it's that good as soon as you add just one other person. Oh, yeah. I agree. Mm. I agree. I know it's just like fish out of water. I just play everything alone, and then suddenly now I have to be with people, and people Wait, stare thousands of other people are on this server with me, and you're telling me I have to play with them? What? Oh, <laughs> Counter arguments, man. Counter arguments. Anyway, I'm with no, that. just, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I, like, I like being that is- Toys R Us has Skylanders. Buy one, get one half off. <laughs> okay, hold on. Um, oh, shit, where are my keys? <laughs> <I'm a wall. laughs> um, so check out that now in Toys R Us near you. Only until the 8th. So by the time this goes free. out, they won't be anymore. I'm not allowed to go into Toys R Us anymore. I don't know why. <laughs> so thanks for listening to Linky Gas. This is episode 24 or whatever it was. I think yeah, twenty-four. Yeah. Um, let's, let's that'd be cool. I, I really like that, these debates. To if you guys have any topics you want to see for a debate, um, and, and as, you, as you probably saw there, we, we try to have the debates be balanced and hit the positives and negatives. I don't like puff pieces. Fuck puff pieces. Um, yeah. Puff pastries. Puff pastries. The, oh, Ooh. I like puff pastries. So that was episode 20, twenty-four. <laughs> um, <laughs> New Brahma, do you have any plugs? Uh, the, the Guild Wars two. Um, what is it called? I forget. A Ghost of Ascalon book reading by the Lincoln. Oh God! Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Coming soon. Indeed. Let's do it. Coming soon. Indeed. Coming soon. And and the anime episode, and then that. Oh campaign. Jesus Christ! What, what what is it called? What speculation cast was it? Shinbo? Oh yeah, about the first. Yeah, expansion. we'll do that eventually. Even, even if Cynic's not involved, I'll do I'll do the editing. Um, <laughs> I think there's also yeah. If, and by I'll do it, I mean I won't do any of it. Uh, I'll just upload <laughs> it as is. Um, uh, the PC Gaming Hub. You can find it on Giant Bomb. Come play PC games. Um, like like PC games. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and like the what Facebook kind page. Oh, of PC games. Oh god. Like the Lincoln Cast Facebook page. Find www.facebook.com slash. Uh, and if you are posting on the, uh, if you're one of those people who have posted on the Lincoln Cast Facebook page, we love you. You're awesome. Yeah, we love you. Thank you. I'm sorry you've been inducted to the, the piece of shit that is Facebook. 
I'm really sorry, guys. Thank you. God damn it. Thank you. If I could, if I could only Facebook's help you, really buggy. you need to help yourselves. Durin. Like it on Facebook. Any vibes? Yes. Uh, maybe my yeah, Durin, channel. I might Final get Fantasy it back going 7? again. Now that the, my when setup is... Final Fantasy is, picking up? Final Fantasy? Yes, that's what, I'm saying. that's what I'm saying. Like Now that my setup is a little bit more permanent, I finally have the proper desk in here where it needs to be. Um, I, I'm going to try to start my streaming again because I fucking want to get back to Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> sure. I, I have not touched it since that last stream. Any plugs? Shinboy? What? Shinboy? Oh, yeah. Okay. Tomorrow is Sunday and my lines aren't playing, so I'll have all day to write. So look forward to on the Giant Bomb forums. I'll be doing my third post in my um, level 2 to 80 World v. World oh, God. Um, series. Talking about how I don't like Groby World and also how awesome the Eternal Battlegrounds jumping puzzle is. <laughs> okay, great, <laughs> great. Um, and also on my personal site, PlugInPlayGaming.com, um, the other kid that I do it with, he put his Borderlands 2 review up, so you can go check that out. Mm-hmm. I took the pretty screenshots of the boner fart enemies. Um, and also, I want to write a piece tomorrow about, I don't know if you guys saw that Steam has software now. Yes. Um, right. And that software has achievements. That's yeah. so weird. It's so weird. So, there, there, one gonna, of those pieces, one of those software actually has an achievement for compiling X number of lines of code. Yep. Yeah. I, I'm curious. Like, I want to write a piece t- discussing um, whether or not you'll see that creep into other software. For like one example I have um, is, say, iTunes. Well, they start adding like link to your Apple account achievements where, say, uh, create 10 playlists in iTunes and stuff like that. I, I'm curious where companies are going to oh, go God. with this whole achievement system thing. That would be now real dirty. Being added to software. That would what's be the, real dirty what's in the iTunes. What's gain from it, though? Own five Black Eyed Peas albums. There's no there, there aren't achievement yeah, points or in like, Steam like, on, here, right? we go, here we go. Buy, buy 10 albums on release day. That's an achievement. Listen to... Listen to five hundred thousand. The, the thing is, though, songs. is that uh, achievement points have existed, or the idea of achievement points, like these achievements, I guess, have existed outside of video games before now. Right. But the thing is, they're starting to catch on elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. It's like, they might have been bigger. there, but they're never catching but on. But I don't understand the Steam achievement system because there's no points associated, are there? No, no, no. Just, same, yeah, same as, still, same as trophies. work for achievements. Yeah, I, I, same as trophies. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that no trophy trophies actually do give you. Um, a level on the PSN, if that's what you're talking well, about. Well, yeah, it gives you a level, but oh, okay, I don't think okay. anything has been as effective as just having a straight-up fucking big-ass number next to your name is Xbox Yeah, totally. Levels. And, you know, yeah, I, but I this, mean, this is going into a whole different different like conversation, but I'm really curious how that stuff is going to translate on the next Xbox. Oh, God. Like, are they are, are they going to drop everyone back down to zero again? Um, I, I, I bet people wouldn't be too pissed if they get wiped. I, I, I for oh, one, would hope that they do. You have the upper oh, cross people would be completely very fucking pissed. pissed but yeah. Or you like, can have like maybe maybe you can opt and also maybe you can opt for prestige. <laughs> <laughs> or also, but like, see, as an incentive, like I'm also in the in this post that I'm gonna hopefully write tomorrow if I have some time. Um, Microsoft just announced their like quote unquote rewards program, I guess you can call it for um, people with high gamer scores, like one percent off or two percent off. Like, say, yeah. bring back that iTunes example. If they say you have so many achievement points, you get like a three dollar iTunes gift card or something. Oh man! Yeah, I just saw this thing by Mage Knight. I post on the Steam community thing. Um, he has a image of him um, looking at the Kodan glacier ships with that vista at the, mm-hmm. the very tip of one of the of one of the um, bows or whatever you call them. Mm-hmm. That is oh, the best. You, that is such an awesome vista. You should you should go out there and get that. If someone if people Wait, have which it. area is that? In? Uh, it's the it's the one with um, Joymag's claw. Oh yeah, Frost Gorge? Frost Yes, I have hundred percent of the yeah, area. Yeah, the Vista on those ice ships are awesome. Anyway, with that, um, oh yeah, you, you can find our community at if you search for Giant Bomb Guild Wars Two on Google. You, there's a bunch of posts there. We have Guild. Um, oh, join the join the Steam the, group. Now the Guilds have, for the Steam group is being expanded. Posted. We will have more news than that in the future. We'll be opening up the probably opening up the doors to new members in a bit. Uh, now that we're mm-hmm. probably going to sort that out. Anyway, so from that, um, you can contact us at uh, the Linky Cast on Twitter, or so at the Linky Cast and the Linky Cast at gmail dot com. You have any questions? If or you have Facebook dot com slash Linky Cast. If you have any suggestions about um, a d- debate topic, that would be great. I'd I love these debates. This worked out really well, right. and um, or just any topics in general that you want to talk about. We have we have one lined up for next week, as requested by a user, and we're happy about it. So aside from that, uh, thank you for listening to Linky Cast. Uh, goodbye. Like us on Facebook.